Hello friends. This is Muse Fanfictions. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto become a new god of chaos. When Naruto gets captured by the Akatsuki and they are extracting the Nine Tails something goes wrong which leads Naruto into becoming the second god of chaos. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Today was not a good day for the famous knucklehead ninja Naruto, in fact, he would say it may have been the worst day of his life even with all he has been through before today. Naruto was in the worst pain he has ever felt, he was currently face first in the dirt screaming the most blood churning scream anyone has ever heard, while he had his hands and legs bound so he couldn't move a muscle. While Naruto was screaming a blue aura was around him while a thin red line flowing out of his mouth in globs and floating up to the open mouth of a huge humanoid statue with its hands held in front of it with huge metal cuffs on its wrists with a metal chain connecting the wrists. The statue had nine semi-open eyes with the ninth eye ever so slowly opening. On the ten fingers of the statue stood ten figures dressed in long black cloaks with red clouds on the cloak. Off to the side stood two figures a man in the same cloak as the people on the statue's fingers with an orange mask swirling to his right eye and short spiky black hair. Next to the unknown masked man stood a person Naruto did know, he knew him quite well in fact, Naruto used to see him as a brother of sorts. He stood on the right of the masked man dressed in a high collar, short sleeve grey shirt with a red and white fan on the back, with black pants bunched at the knee tucked into his shin high, black, and grey ninja sandals. He also had a large bunched up dark blue cloth held to his waist by a purple rope tied in a bow on his back. He also had black full fingerless gloves that went to his mid forearm. This man was Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto's teammate, friend, rival, and brother, but of course, Sasuke never saw Naruto like this. All he saw when he looked at Naruto was a knucklehead, a fool, a dope, a stupid kid that was never meant to become a ninja. But Naruto did become a ninja and started to take things more serious and joke around less, and in turn, he put effort into training, into becoming stronger so he could protect his precious people, his friends. When Sasuke saw Naruto getting stronger than him he put in more effort but Sasuke was always a step behind, Sasuke got more and more thirsty for power to eventually kill his brother Itachi. After Sasuke had succeeded in killing Itachi he had joined the Akatsuki taking Itachi's place in the organization. For the first time during this horrible day for Naruto, he looked over at Sasuke only to be met with a smirk, and when Sasuke noticed Naruto looking at him he only widened his smirk and opened his eyes wider giving a crazed look, and for the first time, Sasuke spoke to Naruto taunting him. Hey Naruto come on just use some shadow clones and a Rasengan or two and you can escape, Sasuke said to Naruto. Oh tisk tisk tisk, don't you know it's bad to tease people Sasuke? said the masked man teasing Sasuke while shaking his head left and right. Speaking of, Sasuke I need to talk to you in private after we are done here and our plans after we have all the biju sealed, said the masked man thinking out loud. Okay I mean I have nothing to do I have completed both of my goals, Sasuke said to the masked man. Hum, yes I just realized that, congratulations, said the masked man. Scene change, meanwhile, the eight fully formed biju were talking about what to do with the almost formed nine-tailed fox Kurama. Now obviously they couldn't let the jubi be reformed as they were told long ago that it would mean the end of the world. Kurama you have to know what to do, we have been trying to figure out what to do for days before you got here but we came up with nothing, Kakuo the white horse with a dolphin head said to the almost fully formed Kurama. Well, Shukaku did you try breaking the husk when you first got here? Kurama said all too calmly for the others to like. Well of course I did I hate being sealed up the most out of all of us you know that. Shukaku yelled out in his normal screeching voice. Shukaku what have we said about the yelling we're all here not spread across the elemental nations. Matabi the two-tailed blue fire cat said to her brother. See calm down we see can't be fighting amongst ours selves at a time like this. Saiken said to her brother and sister. Well. I never thought it would come to this sigh, Kurama said to his brothers and sisters. Hum what do you mean Kurama? Gyuki said while looking away from Shukaku and Matabi. Yes, Kurama do you have a plan? Chome asked her brother. Yes and no, it's complicated, Kurama said gaining the rest of his siblings attention. Well do explain Kurama. Son Goku the full red horned ape said to his brother. Well, 
when we when children so long ago father brought me aside and told me that if it ever came about that the jubi was going to be brought back I was to use the just you he was about to teach me. Karama said shocking his siblings. Well use it already and let's get out of here and party, Shukaku said yelling again. Yes let us get out of here the Karama, Isobu said to his brother. Well it's complicated it is technically a reverse sealing technique to prevent Jubi being brought back but I don't know what will happen when I do finally use it. Karama said causing his siblings to get a bit nervous. Karama if you were taught this just you by father then nothing bad will happen and I'm sure everything will be okay, Kakuo said trying to calm Karama. Yes, I guess you are right but still just in case let's just say goodbye just to make sure we have no regrets if it doesn't work out, Karama said. All right see you all on the outside I guess, and sorry for the yelling, Shukaku said. Well, I guess I'm next, I hope to see you all out there and that nothing goes wrong, good luck Karama. Matabi said in her usual respectful manner while slightly bower her head to Karama. Yes, I too wish you luck Karama, and hope we are all safe, Isobu said while bowing like his sister. I am sure that if father created this and taught it to you personally it will not fail. Let's just hope we do not end up enslaved to the humans again, Son Goku said. I am sure we will all be fine, you are all just overreacting, Kakuo said. W well be f fine I am as sure, d do your b best Karama, Saiken stuttered out to her siblings. We'll all be fine, stop being so glum, Chomei said in a happy go lucky tone. Let us just get this going we don't have much time let Karama, said Yuki. Well, I just want to say I'm sorry for getting us in this situation and that maybe if I had worked with the little kit sooner we may have not ended up in this situation. Karama treating it as a last goodbye to his siblings. Okay, here we go. Karama said starting the necessary hand signs for the just you. He started with the ram seal going to tiger, bird, horse, serpent, dog, rat, tiger, serpent, ram, horse, dog, ox, hare, monkey ending in dragon before calling out, ninja art, reverse sealing technique. Scene change, outside of the husk of the Jubi the members of the Akatsuki were celebrating about finally being done with their organization's goal of having all the biju under their control. Sasuke and the masked man were preparing to go and have their private talk and later celebrate with the other members of the Akatsuki. Then it happened the reed aura being drawn out of Naruto stopped, just stopped. This confused them all greatly as this had never happened when they were extracting the other biju. Then the husk started to lightly shake before the red aura of the other biju came bursting out the mouth of the statue corrupting the blue aura and started flowing into Naruto. This caused all the members of the Akatsuki to freak out and they started rushing to stop whatever went wrong with the ceiling. The masked man's one visible eye widened at what was happening before rushing to stop it from happening whatever it was. What is going on? Sasuke asked the masked man. I don't know, but if it was Naruto I have to wonder why he didn't do it sooner. The masked man said frantically as he was so close to success yet it all seemed to be falling apart. When all the members of the Akatsuki seemed to reach Naruto at the same time they all attempted to strike him to put him back into unconsciousness or to just make him lose focus on what he was doing. But when they all made contact with him and pulled their fists back they all felt a pulling sensation towards Naruto and they also felt slightly light headed before they all fell to one knee and then being yanked forward onto their chest before being pushed away half a foot. They were all greatly confused before Nagato realized Naruto was emitting a similar effect to his diva path of the Rinnegan. When Nagato realized this he had tried to move away from Naruto before feeling his chakra being sucked up and adding to Naruto's reserves. The masked man seeing the chakra leaving everyone around him and entering Naruto along with the tailed beast chakra new Naruto was acting as an empty void for the chakra to flow into endlessly and in an attempt to save himself he tried to use Kamui to get away before he remembered he needed Sasuke with him, so he looked at Sasuke trying to activate his Kamui before being knocked off balance by being brought to Naruto. Touching him he could feel his chakra being absorbed faster than it was before. Try all he might he had lost all the straight to stand in an attempt to run like all the other members of the Akatsuki, they all felt so weak like their very soul was being absorbed into him. After only a few minutes the whole of the Akatsuki was dead their very beings turned to chakra and life force of which Naruto absorbed and after another few minutes, Naruto had finished absorbing the biju into him. This had the effect of enhancing his gravity-like effect on his body causing Naruto to draw in more things and turn them to chakra and life force, whether the object is rocks, trees, and animals. 
Naruto kept drawing more and more of the landscape, the entire process was more painful than having the Kyubi ripped from him. Every few seconds Naruto would send out a wave of energy bigger than the last before he would pull it back to himself, it got to the point where the energy wave had hit the border of Konohagakure no Sado catching the lone Chunin in the watchtower that sat facing where Naruto currently was sending the waves of energy from. Then it happened as Naruto had called the energy back to himself he had ripped part of the wall and tower down and uprooting a few trees, pulling the previous downed trees from previous waves ever closer to him. After Naruto had unknowingly damaged the wall of Konohagakure no Sado and a watchtower the lone Chunin left his post to report to the Hokage and to inform some Anbu about the strange energy he had felt that had destroyed the tower he was in. When the team of Anbu arrived they were just meant to scout out the area for anything strange that could have destroyed the tower, but then they felt that the wave of chakra had rushed past them going further into the walls of Konohagakure no Sado, and as they were looking back and forth at one another about what to do, it had happened just like the Chunin said the energy had ripped up buildings and bigger chuckles of the wall like it was nothing just pulling to an unknown location. The Anbu had rushed to the Hokage to report what they had just experienced the same as the Chunin did and to get their orders about what to do. When the Hokage and three squads of Anbu arrived the area looked like a mess and in ruin like paper bombs had been placed under people's homes and stores and they had all gone off at once. Like previous times before Naruto sent out a wave bigger than the last and this wave had reached from Naruto to the center of Konohagakure no Sado. At that moment the Hokage ordered her Anbu to braces themselves. They all did as told and pushed Chakra to their feet to keep them steady and braced themselves. They had thought it would be enough to keep them on their feet but they were wrong, every single one of the Anbu and the Hokage had either been yanked forward at suck a force they weren't expecting to lose focus and flew forward, the ones that had held their concentration it didn't matter the very earth they thought would hold was just ripped up stuck to their feet from the chakra they were focusing there. The Hokage after regaining her balance and focus gave immediate orders to her Anbu that were present with her. I want a squad to go gather the rest of the Anbu, tell them to help out with rescuing civilians another to start looking for and getting civilians out from under any ruble, the last squad gets me the best sensors we have in Konohagakure no Sato and to be brought here, am I clear? was the command she gave to her Anbu. Hi. Was as she got in return for the orders she gave, what the hell is going on right now, the village is in ruins. Tsunade thought to herself as she waited for her Anbu to get her the best of the best. A minute later one of the three squads she gave orders to landed behind her turning around she could see they had brought her the Ino Shika Cho formation team along with Sume Inazuka, Shibi Aburame, Hiyashi Hayuga, along with Kurinai Yuhi. Tsunade had asked Inoichi, Sume, Shibi, Hiyashi, and Kurinai to check if anything was amiss and to see where the chakra waves were coming from, it was at that moment that another wave blew past them. This new wave reaching to the other side of the village and out past the walls. Everyone brace yourselves. Tsunade had said to everyone present. Brace themselves they did but it did not matter in the end, in less than 10 minutes the whole of Konohagakure no Sato had been destroyed, laid to waste, and left in ruin by an unknown force. Well grandfather and looks like your village finally fell, and under my watch too, I'm so sorry. Tsunade thought to herself about what her grandfather would think at seeing such a sight, the village he built up and created just ruble now. Time skip. In less than a week Naruto was left with nothing left to absorb, not a single star dusted the sky, not a solar system full of planets left the universe was gone, turned into energy for Naruto to forever hold. Or so he thought once the pain of absorbing everything in existence had stopped he felt at peace for a little while no longer screaming till his vocal cords tore themselves apart, but then he heard and ached, and he had started to scream again from the pain resonating from deep within his chest. Then there was light, a crack had formed on his chest from his top right near his collarbone down zigzagging to his waist. White was all he saw as more cracked formed on his body not leaving any blank space till he could no longer bear it and just let go. Blackness. That was all he could see if you could call it that, he didn't know whether he had his eyes opened or closed, was he looking up or down, left or right. He had no clue at all, all that he knew was he could feel it, sense it, all the energy he had built up. That all he could feel, he could not reach out and touch it but he knew it was there he just knew it was. Naruto had started to try and pull the energy back to him, to recollect what was his now, but once it got to him it would shoot past or stay near him but not coming to him until it had finally clicked with him. The reason he could not see and touch things, the way his energy would not come to his being was because he had no being at all, he had no body. 
As Naruto thought this another thought came to mind. How was he thinking if he had no mind to think with, he had just confused himself, but that did not matter at the moment what did matter was how he was going to get a body. He knew there were no people or bodies in this dark empty space, but as he thought about it he had all he needed to make a body, yes, that's what he would do. Why hadn't he thought of it sooner? He had all the energy he would need to make a body with extra energy to spare. And so he began to think about what he would want before he would start just to make sure he didn't mess it up, he had learned his lesson about not thinking and running into things headfirst and blindly trusting people, it could end up bad plain and simple. As he thought about the basics he began to really think about the basics, like bigger and denser bones so they won't break as easily as they had before. That would be a good base to start with, he would add onto it from there. When he finally began he put much thought into the process until he thought it was the best he could make it, like denser bones that somehow weighed less than they should. After he was done with his skeleton he began on his muscles and internal organs, making his muscles bigger and denser than they had ever been before, yet still, they were way lighter than they should be for how dense he had made them. He made his organs harder to pierce, someone would need a blade of the sharpest and hardest metal anyone could produce just to leave a scratch, he had planned to do the same for his skin but decided to do the same for inside his body as well. Now was the next thing his eyes he had planned to give himself the Sharingan but he felt a much more powerful energy that the Sharingan could ever produce. Of course, at first, he thought it might have been the Byakugan, or maybe the Rinnegan Aero Sensei had told him about, but he just felt off in assuming it could be one or the other so he just put the more powerful energy in the shape of his old eyes and keeping them the shade of blue they always were, some would say they are like a never-ending ocean you can get lost in with just a glance. Finally having eyes he could see the never-ending sea of colors of energy around him from blues to purples, reds, and oranges, dark greens to limes and yellow. He now put on his new skin that was as tough as steel, nothing would ever get a cut on him, and he had not a blemish on his now smooth skin. He made his hair almost just like it used to be, keeping it the same color, and as spiky as it was, but he made it easier to work with, he had always had trouble in the morning trying to look presentable. Finally, he was done with his body and he thought it had turned out just how he had wanted it to, he would say his height is about 6 feet 6 inches tall with a muscular but lean build as to not look gross and over muscled, but little did others know his muscles were as dense as if he had made them as big as he could think of. He had his deep dark blue eyes with light blue in the outer edges and long but controllable spiky blonde hair. Naruto decided now was time to absolve all the excess energy he had made no use of, it had taken a couple of minutes but he was done and absorbing it all didn't explode him like it did last time and there was no pain when absorbing it all back into his being. He was now at peace, no more pain, no more loss, no more killing, he was happy. But sadly that didn't last too long as soon a portal opened up a few feet in front of him and he could barely see with his eye adjusted to the black void he was in compared to the ever blinding light that was on the other side of the portal. He felt a hand reach out and grab his own before he was yanked through the portal and it soon closed up leaving the empty void. When Naruto was pulled through the portal he landed on his feet stumbling a bit as he was not used to his new body. When Naruto's eyes finally adjusted to the light he opened his eyes and he saw three of the most beautiful women he has ever seen in front of him looking nervous for some reason. The one in the middle of the three spoke first. H hello and Naruto sama. W we have been expecting you. The woman that spoke was a woman with platinum dirty blonde hair in a full white dress showing the top of her shoulders and a bit of cleavage while still looking pure, she had creamy white skin without a single blemish on her skin. Naruto thought she looked like a goddess incarnate. I am K Kami and I W would like to congratulate you on your A ascension. Kami said to Naruto in a silky smooth voice even with her stuttering. On my R right is Yami one of M my 2s sisters. Kami said introducing her sister. As Naruto looked to his left he saw a woman in a dress similar to her sister's but black and ending halfway down her shins with a little more cleavage showing, with black unkempt hair going into a ponytail ending at her mid black with red eyes and a loose bang on the left of her face. Similar to her sister she had creamy white skin and not a single blemish on her body. And Naruto sama. Yami said while bowing her head at Naruto. And this is Shini, also known as Shinigami. Kami said motioning to her sister on her left. Naruto looked at Shinigami and saw the tallest of the sisters in a more grey dress showing less skin than her sisters with pure grey almost with flowing hair with black eyes with little specks of grey and then, in Naruto's opinion they looked like an endless void dotted with stars. She too had not a blemish on her skin. Naruto-sama, Shinigami said to Naruto with little to no emotion in her voice. 
Naruto was stumped at how there could be three women this pretty it just should not be possible, and then he thought about their names and realized these were the goddess people always talked about. Then he also thought about why they had called him Sama, goddess referring to him as their lord or a higher being than them is just not right, isn't it? Sama. Why do you call me that? Naruto's voice came out sounding smooth but firm and it made Naruto radiate power. At first, Kami was confused about what to say to Naruto before her sister jumped in and spoke for her. Well, Naruto-sama it is because you hold more power and authority than us and can tell us what we can and cannot do in terms of interfering with the mortals. Shinigami spoke in a bored and emotionless voice. Why would I have such power over you three? Naruto asked the three sisters. Well, Naruto-sama I did just say you have more power and authority than us. Shinigami said to Naruto causing him to deadpan, and Kami to widen her eyes in shock at the clear disrespect to the question Naruto had asked. I am sure he was asking at how he is more powerful and why he has the authority he has over us am I right Naruto-sama? Kami said to Naruto while explaining the question to Shinigami. Yes that is what I was trying to get at, Naruto said to them. Well, allow me to explain then, Kami said. You see when you were getting the Kiyubi extracted from you, the Biju were having a conversation on what to do in the statue the Kiyubi was flowing from you into. They came to the solution they did, but it did not go the way they thought it would as it made you like an empty void for all chakra and nature chakra, you would send out waves of gravity pulling everything to you, but also while any object or person was touching you, you would convert the object like rocks or trees into the base of matter they are made from and then you would consume it all in a sense. For people, you would do something similar after you would absorb all their chakra effectively killing them you would turn their body to pure matter and absorb it all leaving no trace of them having ever existed. Kami explained to Naruto. So what are you saying? Are you saying I absorbed and killed every living thing in the elemental nations? Naruto asked. Um no you absorbed everything. Yami finally spoke. Like, everything? Naruto said, confused. Did you not notice there were no stars where you were? It was cause you had absorbed them all, along with all the people and planets. Shinigami said to Naruto. Okay well I guess I can see how I would be strong after absorbing the whole universe, but why do I have more authority than you all? Wouldn't it be the other way around since I'm the newest god? Naruto said. You could see it like that, but we knew one day you would gain your new godhood, like a prophecy per se but not exactly. We have just been waiting till you did finally arrived, and let me say it has been a long time coming. Kami said. Why didn't you just bring me here and give me my godly powers rather than wait for everything to happen naturally? Naruto asked. Well, you see Naruto-sama if we were to do that you may have not come out as powerful as you are now, also if we had interfered in any way with your life or certain events you may have never ascended. Kami explained to Naruto. So you decided it would be for the best if you were to just wait for things to happen naturally? Naruto stated rather than asked. That is correct Naruto-sama. Kami still answered. Well, I guess I should ask what responsibilities I have and what kind of powers I have. Naruto said to the three goddesses. At this, the three goddesses tensed and seemed to be more on edge than they were before. W well you d don't have responsibilities per se, more like watching out for what we and the other gods wish to do in there and our worlds. Kami said to Naruto. Wait, other gods and worlds what do you mean? Naruto asked confused. Think of it this way there are an infinite number of universes all with varying possibilities as what could be in them if you think about it a world like it most likely exists. Kami explained to Naruto. There are also gods that make sure the infinite number of their worlds they watch over is safe and stable. Kami further explained. We actually have a meeting soon between us and the other gods. Yami said out loud. Yes, we will have to tell them we have a guest that will be joining us for the rest of time. Kami said to the others. I believe we should get going then don't want to keep them for too long, Shinigami said. Yes, we can also introduce you to everyone while we're there, Kami said exited while opening a portal. Scene change, as Naruto stepped through the portal he came into a room with a massive, U-shaped desk with chairs that looked to be the same shiny, white stone material as the U-desk with what looks to be gold lining on the edges of the white stone looking chairs and desk. On the left of the u there was a second row of chairs behind the first. In the middle, there was a larger chair behind the others that looked to be more secluded like whoever sat there did not normally partake in discussions but when they did everyone in the room was meant to listen. As Naruto looked to his right he saw five men, 
The one on the right was a taller man than most standing a six feet with back spiked hair and pale skin and tired, droopy, black eyes dressed in a black sleeveless robe that had tears and ripes at the bottom of the robe with black sandals on his feet. The next man was a man a little taller than the last standing at six feet two inches with long curly white hair with a long curly white beard and tanner skin than the last man with more lively, sapphire blue eyes dressed in a clean elegant white sleeveless robe with light brown sandals on. The third and final man was the shortest standing at 5 feet 11 inches with short curly brown hair with a light stubble and was the tannest of the men, with blue-green eyes dressed in a full copper chest plate and back, like this, with a multitude of separate leather lengths like a skirt, like this, while wearing leather sandals that wrapped up to his knees, like this, with a three-pronged trident in his right hand propped up on the ground on a pointed tip. The three men to Naruto looked like any normal man you would see but the next two Naruto found strange, and what was strange about them was the fact they had animal heads for heads instead of human heads. The first one of the two was standing at 6 feet 3 inches and full black with the head of a jackal, wolf mix. He had a full gold headdress on his head that went down to his shoulders with a gold necklace that had a thick gold onk that went down to his chest with a full gold skirt that stopped right above his knees. In his left hand was a staff that stood as tall as him with a gold jackal wolf head mix. In his right hand was a gold onk on a necklace. On the back of his hip was a sheathed kopesh. The second of the two had the head of an owl with alternating gold and dark blue headdress with gold shoulder pads with blue highlights with a gold disc surrounded by two snakes going to his left and right on his chest. On his wrists, he had gold and dark blue wrist protectors. On his lower half, he was wearing a long skirt with gold lining with a circle of gold on the front of his hip. In his right hand, he had a gold staff with an eye of raw on top. Seeing the four new arrivals enter via a portal the five on the right took their seats with the three human-looking men on the right close to the end of the U. Then the two animal-looking men then a three-seat space and the larger seat behind the three Mon seats with five more seats on the left side of the U desk with five more slightly raised behind the first five. The human-looking man with white hair and a white beard was eyeing Naruto with suspicion and a bit of unease. The man with black spiky hair seemed like he could care less at being here. The third man with short curly hair seemed the eye Naruto not with unease or suspicion but curiosity. Well well, you sure kept us waiting. The man with white hair and beard said to the new arrivals. Sorry to keep you all waiting Zeus, we had to pick up a very special guest who will be joining us for the rest of time. Kami said to the occupants of the room. At this, the two animal head men paid more attention along with the black spiky haired man. I would assume then that you are fairly new and it is maybe your first meeting, I would like to welcome you. My name is Anubis, said the jackal wolf mix man. Yes, I as well would like to say welcome. I am Ra, the owl man said. Zhu said hearing that Naruto was a new god and that this was his first time ever at a meeting between gods thought he could use the boy to gain more power in the council of the gods, he would just have to tell Naruto that since he was a new god he had to listen to his predecessors when that asked something of him. When Zeus realized this he got an evil glint in his eye at the possibilities. Zeus's two brothers seeing the glint in his eyes knew he was planning something and were hoping he didn't go too overboard at using the new boy. Kami seeing the glint in Zeus's as well as noticing that his brothers were looking at Zeus and now eyeing up Naruto knew she had to say something. Ah, I see, well I'm sorry to disappoint you Zeus, Hades, Poseidon, you won't be using this boy to try to gain more power in this council. Kami said shocking the three brothers. Anubis and Ra hearing this were eyeing up the three brothers due to the fact of them thinking about using the new boy, on his first day no less. I don't know what you were talking about Kami. Zeus grumbled out a Kami. Oh please enlighten all of us then what was that look in your eye just then? Kami asked of Zeus. I was just excited to see a new face, it has been quite a while. Zeus quickly lied to everyone. He's lying. Naruto suddenly said shocking everyone. What did you say brat? Zeus yelled annoyed at Naruto. What do you mean Naruto-sama? Kami asked Naruto. At this most everyone in the room raised an eyebrow at the fact Kami had called Naruto, Sama, except for Kami's sisters. I can tell he was lying. Naruto said shocking everyone. Stop lying brat. Gods can't read each other's thoughts and intentions. Zeus said really annoyed now. Well we can talk about this some other time. Naruto Sama I believe it is time you take your rightful seat. Kami said trying to change the subject but still reminding herself to talk to Naruto about this later. 
What Kami did next shocked the five males in the room. As Kami led Naruto to the largest chair in the room, and when they arrived at the desk Naruto just walked through it like it was any other material when in fact it was created by the gods themselves and was one of the sturdiest things in all realms, but for him to just walk through it like it was air and sit at the seat only meant for a god that held the most power over the others could sit and tell the other gods what they could and could not do in all the realms. What are you doing he is a fresh god and you let him sit there? Are you insane have you lost your mind maybe we sold strip you of your godly power and seat at this council for this? Zeus yelled out in utter anger at the fact a fresh and new god was at the seat of most power on day one when he has been striving to get to that seat only to be denied it at every turn. Silence. If she is letting him sit there then he is the one who is meant to be there do not overreact like that it is not a good look for a god. Anubis said while looking over to Naruto while bowing his head a little. I am sorry for my outburst just now my lord. Anubis said raising his head from bowing in front of Naruto. Ra seeing Anubis act like this realized the gravity of the situation decided it would be best to not piss off a new powerful god gave Naruto a little bow. Zeus now slightly seething at the fact Naruto seems to have acquired so much authority on his first official meeting even if everyone wasn't present. He had already lost so much power when the next meeting would come around. Zeus I would heavily advise you to calm down before you make a big mistake you are going to heavily regret. Kami said a heavy steel to her voice. At hearing this her two sisters turned their attention back to Zeus and narrowed their eyes. Zeus was now seething while glaring at Naruto. Naruto was just blankly staring at Zeus wondering why he could be so mad at him. Brother for once I agree and think you should just calm down. Poseidon said to his seething brother. Yes brother. Maybe another time once you calm down. Hades said once in a few times agreeing with one of his brothers. Fine. Another time we will pick this up, we are not done. Zeus said directly to Naruto before Kami had opened up a portal that led to Mount Olympus. After Zeus and his brothers had left everyone looked expectantly at Naruto before looking to Kami before she spoke up. Well then, Anubis, Ra, I'm sorry you came for no reason but it was just a minor meeting and nothing major was planned anyways. Sigh, Kami had said sounding exhausted. Do not trouble yourself. I am sure the others would love to hear about what happened at the meeting they decided to skip and I can't wait to tell them about which seat was filled in their abstinence. Anubis said sounding a little joyful. Yes well tell the others I said hello and I hope their duties go well. Kami said to the now leaving Anubis and Ra. I do hope the next time we see you it is under better circumstances. Anubis said to Naruto with a little bow before walking through the portal home. Ra doing the same, giving a slight bow before going through the portal. Kami, Yami, and Shinigami turned their attention back to Naruto who turned to them looking bored with his head in his hand before giving a yawn. I thought I was going to get an adrenaline spike from a good fight but you had to ruin my fun, oh well. Naruto said bored at the way events turned out. Sorry to disappoint you but we don't want you to die in your first month of being a god, especially from someone like Zeus. Kami said a bit in disgust and anger along with annoyance. I wish he would just try something so we can just get rid of him already. Yami said showing a bit of her sadistic side. Does he act like this often? Naruto asked now curious about this god named Zeus along with his brothers. Every time, he always gets mad about something not going his way. Shinigami said with a little smile coming to her normally stoic face. He reminds me of that Sakura girl and her mother that was on the human council. Ha. You're right Shinichan he gets just as mad and annoying as they used to. Yami said with a little chuckle. Moving on. I would like to ask you all something. Naruto said to the three sisters. And what might that be Naruto-sama? Kami said. What is my godly aspect or aspects? Naruto asked. When Naruto asked this the goddess seemed to tense up with Yami looking at her sister in hopes she would find a way to get around this right now. What do you mean Naruto-sama? Kami said to Naruto. Fine. I guess I have to be a little more direct. Naruto said staring at Kami. What are my godly aspects or a singular aspect, like you being the goddess of creation and life? Naruto said more annoyed while sitting up in his seat. Yami is the goddess of torture and ruler of the underworld. Mistress of devils and demons. Naruto said looking at Yami. Oh, Naruto-sama I didn't know you knew so much about me. Yami said teasingly at Naruto while eyeing him up and down while licking her lips. Naruto decided to play along and tease her looked her in the eyes before letting her see him slowly look her body up and down before looking her in the eyes again and smirking, 
causing Yami to get a pinkish tint to her cheeks as no one would so openly look a goddess up and down like he just did. Naruto turned his attention to Shinigami before saying, and Shinigami is the goddess of death and souls. Naruto then turned to Kami, so I am asking what am I the god of? Naruto said while narrowing his eyes at Kami. You see we don't quite know yet, well we know one of them at least but not all of them if there are more. Kami said to Naruto while looking around the room. Hum. Why don't you tell the truth next time? Naruto said spooking the goddess frozen in place. I I don't care know what you're talking about Naruto s sama. Kami said a bit shaky from Naruto catching her at a lie. Hum. Well okay I don't need you to tell me anyways. Naruto said while standing up from his chair and walking over to Kami. What do you mean? Kami asked now a little scared and concerned. Naruto was now standing in front of Kami almost towering over her while looking down at her into her eyes while smirking and bringing his hand up to lightly brush her cheek as he went to the top of her head and picked up a little fly off her head. A fly? Kami asked. Yes a measly fly can go unnoticed on someone's head, but once it is there it can do whatever it wants. I based it on my shadow clone just you I used to use a lot, but a more solid clone with all my abilities like it is an exact copy of me, not a mere knockoff and then used something similar to a henge, but again not a knockoff of the original it is a solid entity that I had suppress its own presses as to not be detected by you. Naruto explained. Now you may be wondering what the purpose of it is, well alow me to enlighten you. I can use it to tell if you are lying. At this Kami again tensed up already knowing what was coming. What emotions you feel, at this Yami and Shinigami tensed as he should not be able to read other gods so easily. And every thought you have ever had, now all of them were looking at Naruto with slight fear at what he was able to see in Kami's mind. I know I was meant to sit in that chair for the rest of time making sure the kids all played fair, and when one of them got out of line I was meant to raise my voice and wave of my hand and make the kitty who was out of line feel pain for the first time in a long while, and in turn keep all the little kitties in check. Naruto told the three goddesses. The goddesses were now looking in utter fear at what Naruto would do to them having found out. Don't worry though I'm not going to give a wave of my hand though to you three, I quite like you even if you wanted me to live out all of the rest of time in the most boring way. Naruto said while rolling his eyes in boredom. I just want to have some fun, is that too much to ask? Naruto said getting excited. L like w what? Yami asked. Let me ask the same to you, what do you do for fun, I bet you go and torture some evil souls in the underworld am I right? Naruto asked. Why yes. I like TT to do it to our relive some stress once in a while. Yami said to Naruto. Great, let me just say I would like to relive some stress, a full 17 years of stress. Now is it okay for me to do that or do I have to do a little wave of my hand to make it so you cease existing? Naruto said while lifting his left hand for emphasis. I d don't think T that will be be necessary Naruto sama. Kami said shakily. But if I may ask what will you do? Kami asked wanting to know what Naruto would do with his new power and seemingly being quite upset. I'm going to do what I was made to do of course, and what I have also always wanted to do. Naruto said while breaking into a small grin. I'm going to destroy some universes here and there kill some corrupt people I hate and move on to the next world. B but your s still new t to your p powers you just n need to relax and j just let us help you you use them better. Kami said trying to get Naruto to stay a little longer. Oh there is no need for that, I learned the basics of what I can do while I was going through your mind and what you knew nothing about I'm going to test them out on various people and worlds, Naruto stated. There's nothing we can say to keep you here can we? Kami asked Naruto. No, but hey while I'm gone done let Zeus convince everyone I'm crazy or whatever he comes up with for why you all should team up and try to take me out, or seal me away then throw me into a void. Naruto said fully knowing Zeus from the brief encounter they had would totally try to do something like that. As Naruto opened up a portal and was about to step through he stopped and turned around in time to catch a hug from Kami as she said, we will do the best we can, but you need to train up and get stronger in case we fail, okay? Kami asked of Naruto fully knowing it would a long time before she would see him again. That's what I plan on doing, and I'll come back when I think I'm good enough to never take a scratch even from other gods. Naruto said cracking a small smirk. He once again got attacked by a hug but this time from Yami, as she tucked her head into his chest he could feel two small wet spots appear on his shirt before she pulled away and leaned up and gave him a kiss on the cheek before saying, stay safe and come back strong, okay.
Yami said while looking him in the eyes. He felt a pair of lips touch his left cheek as he realized Kami gave him a kiss on the cheek just like her sister. Come on Shinichan, get over here. Naruto said while holding his arms open towards Shinigami. As she stepped closer he opened up his arms further before pulling her into a hug resting his head on hers. She then pulled away and like her sister she gave him a kiss on his right cheek. When she pulled away she had a small smile on her face. I guess I better not go die now that I have three beautiful goddesses waiting for me to come home safe. Naruto said jokingly. You better come back without a single scratch on you, you hear me? Yami said looking a little mad at the joke Naruto made. Not a scratch Naruto-sama. Kami said agreeing with Yami. With Shinny just staring with a small smile on her face. Better get going now. Naruto said turning back to the portal he had kept open before stopping again and saying, For my first decree is the second coming of the god of chaos, let there be chaos. Naruto said with a grin before walking through the portal disappearing to an unknown land. W wait, wait, wait. A man screamed as he had his head held in a single-handed grasp from his attacker while he grabbed the man's wrist in hopes of pulling the hand from his head but he still knew it was a futile effort. Still, at the man's pleas, his attacker stopped and looked him in the eyes while loosening his grip but still having it gripping his head hard enough to not lose his grip and have the man scurry off in hopes of getting away. The man's attacker was a giant of a man with blonde crazy spiked hair with deep ocean blue eyes. At this brief freeze in time, the man took it to look around at what this mysterious attacker had done to his friends and comrades. Looking around he could see their bloody and some dismembered corpses around their camp, with a few having a crushed skull from the pressure their attacker had put on it with a mere one-handed grip which at this moment was why he had pleaded with the man to stop when he had gotten him to his knees and was gripping his head. This was finally when the attacker had spoken to him for the first time, and why should I spare you? The man's voice came out deep and firm. Please I'll do anything just please let me live. I'm not ready to die yet. The man pleaded in hope of living to see another day. I will spare you if you leave immediately and stop being a thug and actually become a decent person. Naruto said to the man in his grip. Yes. Of course, I'll leave right away. The man quickly said while sighing in relief that he had gotten out of dying for one more day. As Naruto let go of the man's head he took a step back letting the man get to his feet who still had to look up to him while standing at full height which helped to intimidate the man further. The man quickly ran out of the clearing which had been home to him and his comrades camp but it was now laid to waste and had his comrades bodies all over the place. Naruto looking around the area seemed to sink back into his bored state, no one in any world could give him much of a challenge even when he holds back so much. Sure he got to test new powers every now and then and perfect them and that was always fun but when he got done with the intensity of battle, he just got bored again. Naruto was brought out of his thoughts as he had detected movement coming closer to him from multiple sources which seemed to be moving at high shinobi speed which meant it wasn't more of the bandits that belonged to the camp he just wiped out. Deciding to see what they had wanted and also to see if he could have another battle. He waited in the middle of the clearing in the middle of the camp sitting on two bodies he had stacked up to make a nice seat while he waited. After about another minute or two Naruto knew they were around him in the trees, they seemed to be trying to stalk their prey. All the while Naruto was getting more and more bored with each passing second until finally, he broke and just said, Okay can you just come out now I know there are four around me in the trees, and I presume you're a squad of shinobi but if your goal was to bore me to death it's working. Naruto's voice rang out in the clearing, shocking the shinobi in the trees who all thought they were suppressing their chakra to be undetectable. The four shinobi all appeared in front of Naruto ten or so feet away looking completely unfazed with all the blood and bodies around them, though Noro couldn't quite tell as they all had their normal anbu masks on covering their faces all dressed in standard anbu gear. The anbu in the inu, dog, mask spoke up, Did you do this to these men? I would hardly call them men for what they had done in their raids of small villages but yeah I did this to them. Naruto's deep voice rang out at the Anbu. What village are you from I would assume Konohagakure no Sato due to the close proximity. Naruto asked the Anbu. That is correct. We were sent to gather intel on the camp and anyone here before performing a night raid and take anything useful but you seem to have done that for us. The Inu Anbu said no emotion present in his voice. At this Naruto looked over the squad one by one the first being the apparent squad leader and Anbu wearing the Inu mask, the man seemed to carry himself well and seemed to trust his comrades. The next was an Anbu wearing a Kuma, bear, mask, 
He was bigger than the squad leader and seemed pretty strong if Naruto referred to the size of his arms. The third member of the squad was an Anbu wearing a Nako, cat, like mask and was about the same height as the squad leader. The last Anbu was wearing a Keiru, frog, like mask and was a woman and was shorter than her teammates. As Naruto stood up they could now see that this would turn bad if he would decide to attack them as he was taller than their comrade Kuma and seemed to have a well-defined form to him, if he was at all a skilled shinobi like the bodies around them said they might have some trouble. While Naruto was stretching while he stood up he said, well I'm bored, wanna fight? At this, the Anbu stiffened and looked to their squad leader for what to do, I see no need for that, we will grab what we need and leave, there is no need to cause unnecessary bloodshed. The Inu Anbu stated. A you are right, but you see I'm kinda bored no one seems to give me a challenge so I thought some Anbu would at least give me a little adrenaline boost. Naruto told the Anbu, at this statement, the Kuma Anbu was getting annoyed, this was supposed to be a chill mission with no trouble but still, some fun and action, and suddenly when they get here their mission seems to be cancelled as their objective is already wiped out and now the one who did it seems to want to fight them for no reason. Come on why don't we just take him out and maybe when we get back we get a pay boost for his entry in the bingo book if there is one. Kuma said to his team. Kuma you are always looking for a fight and getting hurt. This mission was meant to let you recuperate from your last injury while still doing some work, but now you want to fight an unknown assailant who could hurt you worse than last time. The Keiru Anbu said to her teammate. It won't be that bad what's one guy against a squad of Anbu like us. Kuma said arrogantly. Kuma. I think it would be best for us to listen to what Nako says and just grab what we need and go. The Nako Anbu said, adding to the conversation. Deciding to provoke a fight out of them for some fun Naruto created a kanai out of thin air behind his right leg with no flashy movement to give him away, and then he threw it at the Kuma Anbu, not to kill of course but just to scratch him on his mask leaving a visible mark. When the kanai went past them they all looked at Naruto to see him just standing there watching them. At this, it was it for Kuma and he spoke up to his squad leader, are you kidding me he just attacked me and we're just going to go, we can totally take him. All he did was take care of some bandits which aren't really skilled shinobi. Fine but if I call it we are pulling out and heading back to the village, Inu said to his squad. Heck yeah. Kuma said while running at Naruto with Nako pulling out three kanai at throwing them at Naruto. To which when the first kanai reached him he put his pointer finger through the hole at the end of the kanai before letting it spin on his finger before stopping it and using it to deflect the other two kanai. He then threw the one in his head back at Nako, who had to pull out another kanai to block his own he just threw. When Kuma reached Naruto he threw a chakra enhanced punch at Naruto who just leaned to his left while grabbing Kuma's wrist and pulling him past himself and then punching Kuma in his elbow with a sicking crack and a scream from Kuma, Naruto then yanked Kuma back to him dislocating Kuma's right arm then elbowing him in the face knocking him on his back grabbing his now broken and dislocated arm. Nako and Inu seeing their teammate go down through Kanai in between Naruto and Kuma to drive him back a bit, Naruto took three steps back and leaned back to dodge the Kanai, as Naruto stood back up he saw Nako and Inu running at him with Kanai in hand. The first to reach him was Inu and he quickly threw a kick to Naruto's chest. Naruto blocked the kick by making an X over his chest with his arms. He then quickly grabbed Ina's leg with his right hand and blocking the kanai swipe from Ina's right hand with his left, Naruto then let go of Ina's leg causing him to miss the kick with his left, Naruto then gave him a kick to his unguarded chest launching him back near Kuma, at this point while looking at Ina's down form for the split second he had he could see the Keiru mask Anbu near Kuma using some medical jutsu fixing him up. Nako had now reached Naruto and did two quick swipes with his kanai before doing a quick thrust at Naruto's heart in an attempt to end the fight quickly clearly affected by his emotions Naruto noted, but he did not reach his target as Naruto grabbed his wrist to stop him and gave a squeeze making him drop the kanai and a fast punch to his stomach knocking the air out of his lungs then grabbing the kanai before it hit the floor then Naruto stuck it in Nico's right thigh. Hearing his squad member scream in pain Inu looked up and shook off his dizziness to see his squad member get a strong right uppercut to the jaw and fall back unconscious, looking at Kuma and then Keiru and back to Naruto stealing his reserve and standing up in a rush and running at Naruto to finish the fight and mission and get back to Konohagakure no Sato after what was supposed to be a simple relaxed mission. Inu threw a kanai at Naruto of which he just dodged. Then Inu threw two shurikens on either side of Naruto which Naruto didn't dodge thinking he was still dizzy from their previous encounter, 
but with a quick pull of ninja wire that was on the shuriken making them wrap around Naruto, Inu ran at Naruto at high speeds while doing hand signs and lightning started to crackle around his right hand while he had his left hand around his right wrist. As he was getting closer Naruto was now intrigued and slightly angry because he has only known one person to be able to do a lightning jutsu like the one he was seeing fast approaching him. Inu now had his right hand stretched out and right as Inu's hand was about to reach Naruto's heart Naruto could see a slight red glint in Inu's left eye. Inu with his right hand now going through Naruto looked up to meet his gaze to see his now lifeless eyes and feel his body going limp before he pulled his hand free and let his team's attacker fall to the floor with a hole through his chest where his heart should be. Walking over to his teammates Keiru and Kuma limping with slight exhaustion and pain, is he down for good Inu? Asked Keiru while still fixing up Kuma and looking over at Inu then the body of Naruto. Yes, he is down for good. I got him with a Chidori. Inu said to his teammate. Well drag Nako over here I'll patch you all up before we head back. Keiru said to Inu. I'll go wake him up. Man this was supposed to be an easy mission too. Inu said looking over at Nico's downed form and then Naruto's downed form and saw a small blood puddle around him. As Inu looked back at his teammate he heard a small crunch like what you would hear when walking on a gravel road and then he felt two lit taps on his right shoulder. As he looked over he saw a brief image of yellow before he was hit in the face with such force it put a small crack in his mask and he was falling over before he was stopped by his attacker grabbing the collar of his shirt. He then looked up still trying to catch his bearings while raising his hands in defense but was too slow as he got another hard hit to the face cracking his mask further and making his body limper. Again he tried to bring his hands up in defense but they wouldn't move before he looked up again only to be met with another punch fully cracking his mask down the center and having the two halves fall either side of his now limp body. Enos now exposed, slightly bloody face with barely open eyes was looking up at Naruto as he slowly drew back his fist again and slammed down his fist into Enos face breaking his nose and knocking him out for good. Again he drew his fist back quicker than his last punch and launched another hard hitter of a punch at his face breaking his nose further. Again he pulled his fist back throwing a faster punch and then drew his fist back again launching another punch then another, then another, then another, in the process fully breaking Inu's nose and shattering the left side of his jaw. Inu's body now lay on the floor at Naruto's feet with Naruto looking down with a blank look on his face tilting his head from right to the left and saying in a whisper so only he could hear, who knows in this world you might have been a nice guy. Naruto then slowly walked over to Keiru who had just watched in shock at the supposed dead man beating the shit one of the ANBU's best. As she looked over at where Naruto's body should be she saw that it was still there and then she looked back at the Naruto standing above her teammate and saw that he was now looking at her, she then looked back to the supposed body, before back to the one watching her. Naruto followed her gaze to his body, and then back to her and he spoke, you must be wondering how I can be alive yet have my body, not 20 feet away at the same time. Why yes I am quite confused, stated Keiru still trying to catch her bearings. Well I guess I could show you, it is one of my tricks I'm more proud of, Naruto said to Keiru. When the mysterious man said this she was a bit confused and intrigued at what he meant by tricks. As the man motioned over to his body, she hesitantly looked away from him to his body, and she looked at it examining it before suddenly moved by having its right hand go out to the right of its body and pushing up and raising its head to look Keiru right in the eyes like it was staring into the depths of her very soul with the blankest look on its face, it then moved its other hand and its left leg till it was kneeling and slowly stood up all the while staring at her. When fully standing Keiru could see the hole in Naruto's chest and the second Naruto started walking over to Keiru and where the other Naruto were. As the Naruto with the hole in his chest reached Naruto and Keiru he just stared at Keiru she got more and more freaked out at how he was still alive with the gaping hole in his chest, and finally, the one with a hole in his chest walked over to the one without and held out its hand, the Naruto without a hole in his chest looked over to the other him and gripped his forearm and the other him doing the same. The Naruto with the hole in his chest slowly turned into a sand, dust-like material still holding the colors of his clothes and hair and started flowing into the original till the second was completely gone. The now, hole. Naruto looked over to Keiru and said, it isn't a jutsu in case that is what you were thinking. While Naruto was saying this Keiru was just gaping at what she had just seen, a supposed, dead body, getting up and walking over to a copy of itself and getting absorbed. T then W what was th that? Keiru asked. Well I can't tell you, mainly cuz I don't want to but also cause if I did you would have realized you all never stood a chance of winning this short, battle, 
But don't worry I'm not going to kill you all. No I want you to heal them up and drag them back to Konoha and tell whoever is Hokage of what happened here and how easily I took you all down. Naruto said to Keiru who was relieved that her friends and squadmates weren't going to die today. But of course I am going to ask you some questions of my own and maybe answer a few of your ideas I can answer, okay? Naruto stated to Keiru while walking closer and sitting on a body while Keiru was now wondering what type of questions this man would ask. Does he want information on the village, its defenses, and shinobi positions? Information on the new genin coming out of the academy? Was he maybe an assassin and had used their squad to get the information needed to succeed in his mission? What type of questions? Keiru asked. Well like what is your name? Was the first thing that Naruto asked. You do realize I'm an Anbu and it is against regulations to give out our names while on duty, it is also against regulations to take off our masks. Keiru stated to Naruto while looking at the spiky grey haired man now with a face covered in blood and a broken mask near his body. Yes I do, and I'm sorry for going a little overboard on your friend I guess, he looked like someone I used to know and trusted before, before, asterisk ahem nothing sorry. Naruto said with semi-glazed eyes before looking away from the bloody man on the ground out cold to the Anbu with the Keiru mask. Keiru, still looking at the man on the ground sighed and said, when in the heat of a fight your emotions can take over I don't blame you, his name is Kakashi Hataki, he is one of the Leaf ANBU's best. Who was his sensei if you don't mind me asking? Naruto said while looking at the clear blue sky while taking some deep breaths to calm himself. He was taught by our Yandaimi Hokage along with his teammates Rin, and Obito. Obito sadly died in the Third Great Ninja War and Rin would later die on a mission with Kakashi. Keiru told Naruto. Who was the Yandaimi? Naruto asked checking if there were any differences between his world and this one. Hum what do you mean? Everyone knows who our Yandaimi is, Keiru said, confused. I must have forgotten, do you mind reminding me? Naruto said while coming up with a quick lie. Keiru being a little skeptical said, Our Yandaimi Hokage is Minato Namikaze who is married to Kashina Uzumaki and they both have three beautiful children. At this Naruto was a little shocked at the fact both of his parents were alive and he had two siblings. What are their names? Naruto wanted to know. Um well the youngest is named Mito after the Sandame Hokage's late wife Mito Uzumaki. Mito looks just like her mother while acting like her father. The second oldest is Menma who is a bit of an energetic boy like his mother while looking like his father, then their oldest and firstborn is Naruto. Keiru said, giving a little description of the kids. What about little Naruto? Naruto asked Keiru. What do you mean? Keiru said, shifting her gaze from the sky to Naruto where she was sitting near her teammate. Well I mean you gave a short description about the other two kids, why not little Naruto? Naruto said while looking at Keiru with narrowed eyes. Hum. I just don't know that much about him personally, but I'm sure when I heal Kakashi and he is awake and coherent he could tell you about him as he is the uncle of the three of sorts, that is if he doesn't try to kill you first. Keiru explained while adding a little joke at the end. No, that is not necessary, he doesn't have to be awake to tell me. Naruto said while getting up with a little grunt of exertion. What are you going to do to him? Keiru asked, getting a little concerned for Kakashi. I'm going to do what the Yamanakas from your village do, Naruto stated bluntly. How can you read someone's mind? Are you from the Yamanaka clan? Keiru asked, shocked, and a little worried. No, I am no Yamanaka, and as to how I can do it is my little secret, Naruto said. As Naruto walked over and knelt down to Kakashi he held out his right hand and put it on top of his head and started going through his memories. After about 30 seconds he took his hand off his head and walked back to the body he was sitting on, and let out a deep sigh and said under his breath, I thought this world would have been different. Well, what did you see? You weren't in there for a while. Keiru asked Naruto. Hum, nothing too important. Naruto said, still looking at Kakashi's bloody form. Scene change. Kakashi's mind when Naruto was in it. As Naruto walked down the library like Mindscape he would take down some scrolls that represented memories every now and then to look through the memories. Naruto stopped on a section of scrolls labeled Menma's and Mito's 8th birthday, which had confused Naruto cause the kids from this world were triplets born on the same day but only Menma and Mito were mentioned. Naruto grabbed a scroll labeled, Start of Party. Flash back to 8th birthday. Naruto could see through Kakashi's eyes a nice party in a beautiful house with all the clan heads and their kids at the party, everyone was having a good time, well almost everyone. 
Naruto was looking and couldn't see, Naruto, anywhere in the party, not playing with the other kids, not sitting at the table eating, not near the gifts trying to sneak one to open it before it was time, not trying to get pieces of cake in secret only to get scolded by his mother. Things kids at this age would be doing, but he was nowhere to be seen. That was when Naruto had seen him, in the background when Kakashi was speaking to Minato sitting on the stairs looking sad and depressed, and when the time came for the birthday kids to open their presents there weren't any for Naruto, everyone had forgotten to get him a gift, but at this, he didn't seem shocked at all and it seemed like he was expecting something like this. What had made Naruto the angriest was that after the gifts were opened and everyone was eating cake Naruto could see Minato and Kashina look over at each other and nod. Minato then placed his cake down and said, everyone Kashina and I have an announcement to make, he then looked around the room making sure everyone was paying attention, then looking from Menma and Mito back to the crowd and saying, we are making Menma the head of the Namikaze clan when he comes of age. Kashina then continued, we are also making Mito the head of the Uzumaki clan when she too comes of age to run the clan. Since, Naruto, was the oldest he should have been the heir to both clans but his parents had just abandoned him in a sense and stripped him of his clan heir status. The other kids were glad their friends got such a cool gift for their birthday and the adults were glad that their kids still had more friends that were other clan heirs. This world's Naruto just watched everyone go about their socializing with a look of shock mixed with sadness before he had eventually got up and walked upstairs to his room which nobody caught and just went about their business like Naruto had never been there. Scene change back to the library, after watching the memory he had a general idea of how this world's Naruto was treated by his family and others. He continued to walk deeper into the mindscape in hopes of finding out why this world's Naruto was treated as an outcast until he was a decent way in and he came across a memory labeled, after Kyubi attack, and he was sure he would find his answers in here, he pulled it out and unraveled it before he started watching. Scene change. Hokage's office, in the Hokage's office, we see Minato joined by Kashina, Jiraiya, Kakashi, and three little babies that happened to be born today. So which one did you use Minato? Jiraiya asked of his student. I made Menma and Mito the holders of the chakra in hopes they will be able to harness it in the future. Minato explained to everyone in the room. And what of the soul sensei, the beast will just reform and come back again once it gathers enough chakra? The young Anbu Kakashi asked. I used Naruto to hold the soul, we need to start Menma's and Mito's training as soon as they're old enough, Minato said. That's a good idea cause the Toads recently told me a prophecy about a group of two who will lead the world to great destruction or to a time of great peace, Jiraiya said, telling about the Toads' prophecy. That must be about Menma and Mito right Minato, Kashina said excited her babies would lead the world to great peace. Of course it is. They're the two that hold the Kyubi and can learn to use its power to lead the world to peace, this is even more reason we should start their training as soon as we can. Minato said even more excited than his wife. What about Naruto? Kakashi asked his sensei and the Gama Senen. Well we still love him but Menma and Mito are more important, Minato said to his student. Yes it's not like we are going to ignore him but the world depends on Menma and Mito, Kashina further explained. Hum. I guess you are right, I'll leave you to your business sensei," Kakashi said as he walked to the door of the office. Scene change back in the mindscape, to Naruto, this information meant one thing and one thing only, no it wasn't that Menma and Mito were heroes of the leaf, but the fact that the villagers thought that, and that they thought the opposite of Naruto, they thought that he was the Kyubi trapped in a human body by the Yandaimi. He also now knew a little more information about why Naruto was treated the way he was at the party. Naruto decides it would be best for him to leave now that he had the information he needed. Scene change outside Mindscape, Naruto was back to sitting on the body he was using as a chair thinking of the best way to have the most fun in this world before he finally said, can I come back to Konoha with you and your team? Naruto asked of Keiru. Why? Was all she asked. Seems like fun and I learned some information from Kakashi's mind that I would like to clear up with the Hokage, I can heal them up and help you carry them back. Naruto told Keiru while trying to sweeten up the deal. Sai asterisk as long as you don't hurt anyone else while you're there, Keiru said just wanting her comrades to be okay. I'll heal them up and then I'll carry Kuma there and Kakashi while you take Nako, okay? Naruto told Keiru. Sure. You can take the heavier ones, there was no way I was going to be carrying Kuma all the way there. Keiru said, joking a little about her friend. 
Naruto then lifted his hand with his palm facing the sky pointed at Nico's downed form and lifted his hand a little while bending his fingers in a little. The result was Nako starting to float with the tips of his fingers and tips of his boots touching the ground before Naruto pulled his hand towards himself then placing it back on his lap. Nico's body slowly dangled in the air while floating over to where Kakashi's and Kuma were laying on the ground. When Nako reached where Naruto was with Kakashi and Kuma he slowly floated down till he was flat on the ground. Naruto then walked over to them and placed his hand on Neko's chest and without any sudden movement of flashy light he was healed, back to the way he was before their encounter. Naruto then went over to Kuma and did the same, his arm was unbroken and dislocated. Naruto then regretfully went over to Kakashi and did the same healing him up, but not lessening the pain like he did with Neko and Kuma. Okay they are healed up and the pain should be gone for Neko and Kuma when they wake up. Naruto told Keiru. What about Kakashi? Keiru asked, hum, what about him? Naruto tried to play it off. You said the pain would be gone for Neko and Kuma but not Kakashi, Keiru explained. Yes I did say that. Naruto said more or less trying to avoid the question. What about Kakashi's pain? Keiru asked, now growing more concerned. Okay, fine, I healed him up he's fine, but I left the pain there so it will still feel like he has a broken nose and jaw, Naruto said finally. Why didn't you just take away the pain for him too? Keiru wanted to know. Call it personal feelings on the matter. Naruto said to Keiru while going back to looking at the sky. But why though? Keiru asked Naruto again. Oh by the other gods. Naruto said under his breath. I could have just not healed him and left him the way he was, all broken and in pain and then when we got to the Hokage's office just dropped him at the Hokage's feet just to see his face when his prized student is all broken at his feet. Naruto said, a little annoyed. I guess you are right, fine let's go, Keiru said standing up. Finally, Naruto exclaimed to the sky while stretching. Naruto then went over and picked up Kuma while putting him over his left shoulder like he was a light feathery pillow which had shocked Keiru, as she watched one of the biggest and heaviest people she knew get picked up like it was nothing. Naruto then picked up Kakashi with a little toss putting him under his right arm with his arm around Kakashi's stomach. Naruto then started the hour walk back to Konoha with Keiru right next to him with Neko over her right shoulder. Time skip one hour. Sorry I'm lazy I'm not writing an hour of them walking and talking. Naruto and Keiru had now reached the gates of Konoha to see the two eternal Chunin gate guards Azumo Kamizuki and Kotetsu Hagen looking as ever extremely bored, that was until they noticed two figures walking towards the gates with what looks like three other bodies with them. See that they now had to do their job both Chunin straightened to attention as the figures got closer when they finally were able to see who was approaching they saw it was an Anbu with another Anbu over their shoulder with a taller man next to them with two other Anbu in their grip. Halt, name and business with Konoha. Azumo said trying to be professional. Anbu squad 22 reporting back after a mission. Keiru said to Azumo. Okay, head to Hokage tower and give your report on what happened to the Hokage. Azumo said to Keiru. Keiru then started walking forward and then Naruto started to follow before he was stopped by Azumo, where are you going? Azumo asked. I'm going to the Hokage Tower, I'm with Keiru, Naruto said to the two Chunin. Azumo then looked to Keiru for confirmation, who nodded her head in acknowledgement. Sorry for being all serious you're free to pass through, Azumo said to Naruto who nodded his head and said, it's all good, you're just trying to keep up appearances and all. Tell me about it. Kotetsu said while rolling his eyes and looking to the sky. Come on let's go. Keiru said being exhausted, having carried her teammate for an hour. Yeah yeah I'm coming. Naruto said while adjusting his hold on Kuma and Kakashi who now had an unbroken mask replaced on his face. After walking for a couple of seconds Naruto looked over his shoulder and said, Later Azumo, Kotetsu see you around sometime. Who both looked at the retreating form of Naruto and gave a little wave. After a little bit of time, Kotetsu looked over at Azumo and said, Hey did you give our names to that guy? Azumo who was looking at the sky said, No, why? And Kotetsu said, Then how did he know our names? Azumo who had now looked over at his friend and partner just shrugged and said, Maybe we're famous or something. While going back to looking at the sky. Kotetsu didn't believe him but oh well what could he do, yeah right. He said with a little snort like laugh. Scene changed back with Naruto and Keiru Hokage Tower. Naruto and Keiru were now outside the Hokage Tower and were making their way inside, 
and made their way up the stairs to the Hokage's office and Keiru stopped in front of the door to the office and gave two light knocks before they heard a soft come in. Scene change in the office before Naruto and Keiru came in. In the office of the Hokage, we see Minato currently in an intense battle, a life or death situation, his enemy, paperwork, yes being a powerful cage wasn't all fun and games it involved lots and lots of paperwork, you could ask any cage of any world what their worst enemy is and almost every single one would say paperwork. As Minato signed a piece of paperwork and placed it in the done basket he put another piece of paperwork in front of him and began reading before he heard two light knocks on the door, he first checked the time to see if it was a meeting and was relieved when he saw it was still 12.48 and not 1.30 when his meeting was. After placing the paperwork back in the pile and clearing his desk he said, come in. When the door opened Minato saw an Anbu with a Keiru mask enter the room with another Anbu over her shoulder with a Nako mask, then a taller man entered behind her and had to duck to get in the doorway much like his sensei Jiraiya had to do so he just started to use the window, with an Anbu with a Kuma mask over his shoulder which was impressive due to the size of the Anbu he was carrying, but what caught his attention the most was the Anbu that was under the man's right arm wearing an Inu mask. Looking at the Inu Anbu to the man and then to Keiru he said, report Keiru who then said, Hi Hokage-sama, the mission was a success we just ran into a little trouble. Under her mask, Keiru cast a look over at Naruto. And what was that little trouble? Minato asked. Um, just a little someone, but it was no problem. Keiru said to the Hokage. Catching her emphasis on, little, he looked over at Naruto who looked bored out of his mind. Are you the trouble she was talking about? Minato asked Naruto. Why yes, I am actually. Naruto's deep voice said to the Hokage. Please tell me why there is a man that was hostile with a squad of my shinobi in my office Keiru? Minato said a little cautious and annoyed. Well Hokage-sama, he was just and I quote, bored, and he wanted to fight, when the fight was over we sat and talked before he healed them and carried them with me all the way here. Keiru said to Minato. Hum, so you're not an enemy of the leaf? Minato asked Naruto. Not one bit was just trying to test myself and have a little fun in the process," Naruto said to the Hokage. Well how did the mission go Keiru? Minato asked Keiru. We were on our way to the location of the camp of bandits and thugs, and when we arrived we saw him, Keiru said moshchening to Naruto, sitting on two bodies like a stool, while being surrounded by the bodies of every other bandit in the camp. Keiru finished. So you wiped them out by yourself? Minato asked Naruto. Yes I did wasn't much of a challenge though, Naruto said to the Hokage. And I assume that is why you attacked my Anbu, Minato stated. Actually I provoked your Anbu to attack me, Naruto said to Minato. Minato then looked over to Keiru for confirmation, it is true sir, he provoked Kuma to attack him, Keiru said. Why am I not surprised, Minato said while shaking his head from side to side while holding the bridge of his nose. Would you be interested in becoming a leaf shinobi? Minato asked while looking at Naruto and leaning on his desk. I'm sorry I have to decline, I don't have the training to be a full-fledged shinobi, only enough to protect against bandits. Naruto lied. Well who was your sensei cuz with your little training you took out a squad of Anbu and one of my students and my best student at that? Minato asked. I never had a sensei. Naruto lied again. Would you like to become a sensei then? If you taught yourself enough to take out Anbu I'm sure you would be a great teacher. Minato asked hoping he would say yes. I'm sorry I have to decline that offer as well. Naruto said bluntly. A true shame oh well enjoy your stay in Konoha while you are here. Minato said, sounding a little down at losing the possibility of having such a strong shinobi in the Leafs forces. I think I will. Naruto said while putting Kakashi and Kuma down on the ground. As Naruto walked out the door he again ducked his head to fit under the doorway before making his way out the Hokage Tower. Do you think we can trust him Keiru? Minato asked when Naruto asked. Hi Hokage-sama if he wanted he could have killed our squad before coming here looking like a merchant or something. Keiru said to the Hokage. I see, hopefully you're right. Minato said to Keiru. Also take them to the hospital to get checked out just in case. Minato said moshchening to Nako, Inu, and Kuma. Hi Hokage-sama, Keiru said before Shun shining away with the three. Scene change back with Naruto, Naruto was walking through the village that had once caused him so much pain in his early life. 
Seeing so many familiar sights like familiar stores he was kicked out of. Parks where parents grabbed their kids and left when he showed up. Alleyways he was tortured in. Restaurants that refused to serve him. You know all the normal things one would think about while walking the streets. Then he came to a familiar street and that's when he smelt it. The foods of the gods, ramen. But not just any ramen. Ichiraku ramen. Naruto got closer to the familiar stand and walked through the flaps to his usual seat on the far left of the stand before he noticed someone was already in it, so he sat down next to them on their right, as he did this the person next to him tensed up. He looked at them out the corner of his eye and saw a boy no older than twelve sitting there with spiky blonde hair and dark blue eyes. Naruto then looked to the kitchen and could see a tense Tucci looking over while stirring some ramen for other customers on the other side of the stand. He could also see Ayame grab a free unused pan and slid the handle down her hand till she was only gripping the end like she was ready to throw it if anything happened while looking at him out the corner of her eye while making her own batch of ramen. After the ramen was done for the other customers Ayame came up to the two Naruto's and asked, Are you okay Naruto do you want me to move him for you? While she was looking at the smaller Naruto. I don't think that is necessary, I am no threat to him. Naruto said to Ayame. I don't care what you think it is up to him. Ayame said while motioning to the smaller Naruto. It's okay Ayame, I'm fine. The smaller Naruto said while looking at the counter. Okay. Just call me over if he does anything. Ayame said while giving a little glare at the older Naruto. What can I get you to eat? She asked him. Just some miso ramen please. Naruto said, giving his order. As Ayame went back to the kitchen to get Naruto's order ready Naruto was looking at the smaller version of him with a careful eye. How are you Naruto, life treating you good, family's well I hope. Naruto said starting a conversation, and he saw the smaller Naruto tense when he said, family, yeah I'm great and the family's great. Well that's great, now how do you really feel? Naruto said knowing full well this Naruto wasn't as okay as he said. I don't know what you mean. Naruto lied to this giant of a stranger. I see, well let me take a crack at guessing how life is really treating you, okay? Naruto said pausing while looking over to the smaller Naruto. I bet you were ignored by your family, specifically your parents. And your sibling act all nice when your parents are around but in private they belittle you to bring up their own ego. And I bet you are so lonely. Oh the real killer is the loneliness, just wanting to have that attention, and when you do get it it's the wrong kind of attention, not love but hate and misunderstanding. And I bet when it's your birthday, a day when you're supposed to celebrate your birth, you are the most lonely. Cuz Menma and Mito get all the attention you wish you got, the love, the gifts, the hugs from your parents, Naruto paused for a second to let it all sink in. Well here you go, hey Naruto, why are you looking like that, I knew I should have Mo, Ayame started angry only to get interrupted. It's nothing Ayame he just said the truth, little Naruto said while looking up to the older Naruto. Hum, fine. Ayame said, walking to the other side of the stand to get a new customer's order. So what is the occasion, I know you eat ramen to celebrate things, Naruto said to the smaller Naruto. I'm graduating from the academy in a week, Naruto said. Well that's great, how did you do in school? Naruto asked his smaller self. Fourth from last, why? Young Naruto asked. Hum, now again tell me how you really did, Naruto said, shocking his younger self. If I wanted to I could have been the rookie of the year, but, Someone told me to hide my true skills. Naruto explained. Yes, the first rule of shinobi, hide your true skills from your enemy so they underestimate you in battle. Naruto said, explaining the reason why you should hide your skills. Although I hope you didn't hide them too much, and let loose a little sometimes. Well sure I beat the dead last a couple times, I just wanted to pass to get my sensei and become a ninja already, grades don't matter on the battlefield. Naruto said to the larger Naruto. I can help you, you know. Naruto stated bluntly while looking at the bowl of ramen. Don't listen to him Kit, I don't trust him. Naruto heard a female voice whisper. Hum, I see you and your partner are friends. Naruto said as a whisper to not draw attention. At this the smaller Naruto tensed as much as his muscles would allow. Kit, we should leave, now. Naruto heard the whisper again, there is no need for that, I will go, here. Naruto said standing up and sliding his untouched ramen over to the smaller Naruto. I know it's your favorite, if you wish to talk I will be atop the Hokage monument, I do hope to see you there though, bye Naruto. He said as he walked out the ramen stand. Scene change. Hokage monument, 
Naruto was now seated at the Hokage Monument with his legs dangling off the cliff waiting to see if he and this world's Naruto could have a little chat. In the meantime he was thinking of his next moves while having two floating balls in his hand floating around in a circle perfectly at the same pace staying perfectly across each other. One seemed to be pure white and seemed to give off a soft glow of white. The second seemed to be pure black and seemed to draw in all the light around it. Naruto was sitting there just waiting while looking out at the village when he heard some soft footsteps like sandals on dirt and stone. I see you came, I assume to get some answers. Naruto said while standing up and absorbing the two balls into his hand, when he turned around he could see Naruto there looking curious and cautious. I was told by my partner to come get answers. Naruto said to the older Naruto, so talk. I will, all in due time Naruto, but first let's head to you Mindscape for more privacy and I can tell both of you at the same time in person. Naruto said walking towards Naruto before they both sat down in a meditative state and went into younger Naruto's Mindscape. As Naruto looked around at the unfamiliar location he was met with a large open field of lush green grass and a forest at the edge of the clearing and a stream running through the clearing, looking up he could see a beautiful blue sky with clouds doting here and there every now and then, near the center of the field with the stream a little ways away was a log cabin style house with a few oak trees casting shade in the front lawn and back of the house. The young Naruto started walking to the house and Naruto started to follow close behind while commenting on the area they were in. I see that your partner taught you how to change your mindscape, I bet she was glad when you changed it from the sewer to this beautiful clearing. How did you know it used to be a sewer? Young Naruto asked. Inside, was Naruto's short reply. When Naruto walked inside he saw a beautiful home with a large kitchen, and living room, with the bedroom and bathroom down a short hall. Looking over to the living room he saw a redhead with long silky hair and red slit eyes, dressed in a long deep red kimono. To Naruto. She looked like a mix of Kami and Yami but with red hair and eyes. Young Naruto walked over and sat on the couch with the women, following his lead Naruto walked over and sat on the couch opposite of them while being closely examined by the women. I still don't trust him. The woman said to young Naruto thinking Naruto couldn't hear her. I know but we have to get some information still, and if it comes down to it I can kick him from the mindscape and we can make a run for it. Young Naruto said to his partner. Naruto decided to mess with them by adding his own thought to the conversation, a good plan but, that only works if the will of the other person is weaker than yours, if it is not then you give them control over your mindscape. Naruto said in their heads. Both other occupants tensed up as his voice echoed in their heads without his mouth moving, and to prove his point he leaned back into the couch while holding out his hand and a small plate with a cup of tea appeared in his hand. I'm not here for games. I came to talk and I would like it if you could do the same without trying to have a secret conversation without me. Naruto said with mock hurt at the end. Fine, what is your name I wish to get pleasantries out of the way so we can get to your explanation. The redhead said while giving Naruto a little glare. Isn't it customary to give one's own name before asking someone else's? Naruto said playing with her a bit more. I am the mighty QB no Kitsune, now talk. QB said, getting annoyed. I asked your name not your title, try again. Naruto said, pressing further into the matter. You don't deserve to know my name, you puny ninja. QB said getting mad at Naruto's stalling. Watch your tongue fox, I am no ninja nor am I puny, far from it. Naruto said getting a little angrier at QB. Who are you to tay? QB said while standing up in anger only to get interrupted as she was thrown across the room pin to the wall. Chains then came out of the wall and wrapped around her arms and spreading her legs making her look like a star. Metal spikes then came out the wall and pinned her hands and feet into it. Ah, QB yelled out in pain while thrashing trying to get herself free. Young Naruto then stood up at the sudden action and looked to Naruto and said, let her go. When she tells me her name and shows a little respect, Naruto said placing his tea on the coffee table making it disappear at the same time. Her name is Akane, now let her go. Young Naruto said while looking over to the now named Akane. Ah meaning matter or red dye, I have to say it's fits, with the bad temper, along with the red hair and kimono. Naruto said while the chains and spikes started to slowly undo, and pull themselves out of Akane, as the spikes were pulling themselves free she still felt all the pain, Naruto had made sure to keep it this way so she learned a little lesson in respect. Akane once free from the chains and spikes fell to the floor panting from the pain, 
She then looked up at the older Naruto's blank face and grunted as she stood up and limped over to the couch and slumped into it. Now that I have proven my point allow me to introduce myself to you too, Naruto, Akane, it is nice to meet you my name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze I'm the son of Kashina Uzumaki the Red Death of Konoha and son of Minato Namikaze the Yellow Flash of the Leaf or the Yandaimi Hokage. Naruto said to the two other occupants of the Mindscape, both had shocked looks plastered on their faces and were at a loss of words. Akane then looked to her Naruto and then to the one across from her, but Naruto doesn't have an older brother with the same name as him. She said as she was motioning to the Naruto next to her. Yeah, I think my parents would tell me something like that, wait did you fake your death and they named me after you in memory of you, then when I got older I started to look so much like you it hurt them so much to look at me. Naruto asked in realization and hope of having a reason why his parents ignored him so much. I am sorry to disappoint, but I am not your sibling, no. I am you from a different world per se, Naruto said to the hopeful Naruto and still shocked Akane. Wait, if you're Naruto from another world that still makes you a ninja who has no right to order me around. Akane said a little frustrated and upset she was embarrassed by this other Naruto in front of her Naruto. As I had previously said I am no normal ninja. Naruto restated that he wasn't human. How did you get here, to our world I mean? Young Naruto asked. That is not important, I have come with an offer for you too, or more specifically you Naruto, the same offer I have given others many times. Naruto said to the younger Naruto. And that would be, Akane asked suspiciously. I essence I can and will give you the power to take your revenge on this village for its mistreatment and abandonment of you. Naruto said, giving a brief rundown. What's the catch if we take this deal? Akane asked, still suspicious. Yeah, there's always a catch, especially when it involves power. Young Naruto said, agreeing with Akane. Oh, except this one, no catch or strings attached. That you need to know about. Naruto said while thinking the last part to himself Akane and young Naruto didn't hear him. Why would you give us a deal like this, and with no strings attached? Akane asked. Call it my belief in it being the right thing to do. Naruto said in response. What do you get in this deal? We get enough power to lay waste to Konoha, but what do you get? Asked young Naruto. I will be getting the pleasure of seeing everyone's faces when they see you destroying everything they hold dear to them. I also will get to see you destroying the other countries and shinobi if you choose to do so. Naruto to them. So you are just in it for satisfaction? Akane asked, now really suspicious of this other Naruto. Naruto mentally rolled his eyes at Akane being so suspicious, normally Akubi would jump at the first chance they got to help their kid lay waste to Konoha, well the ones that made contact and were friends or companions with their Naruto or version of them. Yes, I will only be getting the satisfaction of watching, though if you wish I can join you as well, for example, if you do not wish to kill someone as it is too hard for you I can step in and do it for you. Naruto said at first sarcastically but then became more thoughtful halfway through. Hum, it sounds like an amazing deal, and if what you say about there being no strings attached it is even better, young Naruto said, thinking everything through. But I don't think we are in need of any power as you put it, right now that is. Young Naruto said declining the deal with older Naruto thinking he will just have to wait and give it time which he has plenty of. Yeah, sorry Naruto, we're good, Akane said in a slightly mocking tone towards Naruto. That is too bad, it really is. Naruto said it sounded like he didn't care in the slightest. But before I go I think Akane still needs a little lesson on how a mindscape works. Naruto stared into Akane's eyes like he was looking at her soul. I don't think that is necessary, she is sorry for her bad behavior and manners. Young Naruto said slowly, looking at Akane with a, right, expression. Ugh, fine, yes I'm sorry. Akane said a little defeated that she couldn't mock this other Naruto. Well, I should be going then. Naruto said getting up and walking to the door. Once at the door he pulled it open and took a step before pausing halfway in and out the door before saying, oh and I'll see you outside. Naruto said before walking out and closing the door. Akane thinking she could catch him trying to focus to get out of the mindscape went and opened the door only to see him gone like he was never there, to begin with, guess he has experience with mindscapes. Akane said out loud before looking over to her Naruto and asking, 
why did you turn down the deal kit, it sounded really good for us. I know but, I didn't trust him fully and sure life might suck right now but I'm sure it will get better in the future. Young Naruto said before standing up and saying, guess I should get out of here. With that said he slowly started fading out of the mindscape. I hope you're right, Kit. Akane thought to herself about Naruto's life getting better. Scene change. Back to Hokage Monument. As young Naruto opened his eyes he saw the other Naruto looking out over the village before he turned around and walked over to him. Well is this goodbye? Young Naruto asked. For now yes, but I can always return. Naruto said to the younger Naruto. Well, how are you going to leave? How are you getting back to your world? Young Naruto asked. The older Naruto tensed for a brief moment at the mention of his world before saying, I am not going back to my world as for how I'm going to leave yours, the older Naruto said while looking to his left and having a portal appear there. At this, the younger Naruto was shocked he didn't see the taller of the two do any hand signs or call out a jutsu and a portal appeared. Wow that's so cool what jutsu is it, I didn't see you do any hand signs or anything. The younger Naruto said acting like a child and not his normal calm and collected self. Maybe I'll tell you some other time. Naruto said while walking over to the portal, when he was about to walk through he turned around and said, if you ever get to the point you want to take me up on my offer, you can just think or whisper to me, I will always be watching and listening out for you when you need me. He then turned around and walked through the portal leaving an almost speechless Naruto behind. Whoa! was all he said in his days before he came back to his senses and went back to his day. Scene change. Naruto was currently floating in space above the world he was just on, thinking of what to do next while looking at the world's natural beauty. I could go and check up on the other gods. But that might be boring, I could also go to another world for a short bit, then go check on them, yeah that's what I'll do. Was Naruto's thought process before he opened up another portal to leave to the next universe in hopes for something entertaining. Scene change. Naruto had just come out of his portal and into an alleyway in Konoha. He walked out and could see the streets bustling with activity. People were walking around shopping. Some were pushing carts of goods they were going to sell. People were in their food stands and shops trying to attract customers. Some families were walking the streets. Everyone had smiles on their faces. It was a beautiful day with a clear blue sky and not a cloud in sight, some would say it was the perfect day. As Naruto started walking the streets he was getting some people's attention. How could he not when he stood at least a foot over anyone else on the street, he had some people look at him with curiosity, some with a bit of caution, but some of the women that saw Naruto got a little blush on their cheeks from seeing him, it disgusted him. The fact these same people could turn into the worst monsters you have ever seen and lash out at a child. Unless this is one of the good worlds, Naruto thought to himself, ah uh, then this will be really boring. Naruto decided to pick up a newspaper and smiled when he saw the date at the top, he then extended his senses until they were the size of the village so he could find this world's Naruto, he was looking for either a person with a blue chakra signature and a secondary red one or someone with two souls, their own and their forced prisoner. In most cases, it was a world's Naruto that had the two chakra signatures, but in the cases where a world's Naruto had siblings, he always got the soul. When Naruto found who he was looking for he wasn't happy, this world's Naruto was currently located at the T&I building, but the signatures were weak meaning he, and or she was underground, probably in a hidden level of the building. Naruto quickly made his way to the building of the T&I department, on the outside it looked like any normal building but inside it housed Konoha's feared torture and information department. Naruto was standing across the street from the building watching the heavy shinobi traffic in the area and from people coming in and out of the building. Naruto not sensing any anbu or other ninja watching him backed his way into an ally way. Naruto reached the back of the ally and was hidden from sight. He first made himself invisible to anything less powerful than himself everything, he also made himself intangible from the world so everything would pass through him whether it be a person or any weapon or jutsu, like Obito but also invisible, though if anything did hit him it would still do no damage to him. Walking out of the ally way and into the middle of the street to see if anyone could see him, much to Naruto's pleasure it appeared no one could, he then saw a shinobi walking in his direction not paying him any mind and seeming to look right through him. Naruto watched as the man walked through him and kept on going about his day like nothing happened. Naruto then walked up to the front door for the T&I department before he just walked through it. 
Walking through it he came to what looks like a normal waiting room you would see when visiting the doctor or a police station. Looking to his left he could see what looked like a receptionist, on his right was the waiting room with a couple of doors around the room, he walked over to the receptionist and went through the wall, and stood over her shoulder to see what she was looking at, it was just a waiting sheet list and a sign-up sheet, there were no names Naruto recognized so he stepped out the wall and went down the hall parallel to the receptionist. As Naruto was walking down the hall he peeked his head in dome doors to see them empty or look like a janitor's closet. When he came to the end of the hall he opened the door into a staircase that led to lower levels, the next couple of floors were just like the first seemingly empty room or a janitor closet. Once Naruto came to the tenth floor he only saw four doors this time, peeking his head into the first door on his left he saw an interrogation room with a mirror on one side, going to the room across the hall he saw the same thing. Walking through the mirror, he was in the second door on the right, he then left the interrogation floor. The next three floors were like the tenth with the fourteenth floor being a holding cell floor, with criminals in hold waiting to be interrogated or brought to lower levels to be tortured. The fourteenth through the nineteenth floor was holding cells with the twentieth being a torture floor, Naruto also noticed it seemed to be in use, he then kept going down with the next floors being torture floors some in use and some not. When Naruto reached the 25th floor he saw a lounge with some people in it, he assumed they were torturers or investigators, he saw a tall man dressed in a black cloak with a black bandana on his head with two scars on his face, one from the left of his left eye to the right side of his lips, and one on his right cheek going the right side of his neck. The man was talking to a blonde man about a current investigation and Naruto could care less so he moved on to the next couple of floors. The next floors were criminals either being held till their execution or them being more dangerous, at the 31st floor Naruto saw more cells but these ones were guarded by two Anbu per cell. When Naruto reached the 36th floor he saw an Anbu lounge area much like the one before, he then moved on to the next three floors were again prisoner cells but a team of Anbu at each end of the hallways. Naruto had now reached the 40th floor and at first, he thought it was nothing but soon realized it was heavily guarded by Anbu some hidden in the walls and ceiling, others posted at the end of the hall by the one door, Naruto knew he was finally reaching the area where this world's Naruto was being held. As Naruto went down the final staircase he saw a hallway like at the other but with only one door at the other end of the hallway, he made his way to the door and stepped through it, as he passed through the door he saw a boy no older than ten in the darkroom on his knees with his hands chained and pulled up, his ankles were held in half cuff that was bolted to the floor, his head hung low with his hair covering his eyes. Naruto stepped forward and placed his hand on this world's Naruto's head before entering his mindscape. Scene change, mindscape, as Naruto materialized in the mindscape he saw some of the murkiest water he has seen and some of the dirtiest walls of the sewer, it almost reminded him of his own mindscape. In front of Naruto was a little blonde haired boy on his knees with his butt resting on his heels with his hands in his lap with his palms facing up to the ceiling. The boy was looking a few feet in front of himself at the murky water with some of the deadest eyes Naruto has seen, he also had his mouth slightly open. Naruto felt a little wave of water hit the back of his heels coming from the seal of the Kyuubi, looking back Naruto could see the right gate of the seal slightly open with the seal tag missing. The massive gate suddenly flew open and Naruto saw the massive reddish-orange Kyuubi burst out with a roar at Naruto. The fox leapt at Naruto in an attempt to kill him but soon stopped in its tracks at the boy on the floor without lifting his head put up his left hand to stop the QB. The QB stopped and laid down when the boy raised his hand at it but didn't stop scowling at Naruto. Naruto looked back at the boy to see he hadn't moved except for raising his arm then putting it back in his lap with the same dead eyes staring off into space. The QB then spoke to Naruto, I didn't sense you coming up to the kid's body, who are you? Kyuubi's deep and malicious voice rang out in the mindscape. I am of no importance. I have come to offer a deal to the boy, but he seems to not be in a talking mood right now. Naruto said to the Kyuubi while looking back at the boy. Yes, his mind broke long ago, what kind of deal? The Kyuubi asked Naruto with suspicion. A deal I think you would enjoy. Naruto said while studying the boy with dead eyes. And that deal would be? Kyuubi asked, curious. A deal that would grant the boy his freedom from his prison and enough power to wipe out this village from the face of the earth. Naruto said looking back to the Kyuubi. And how would a simple ninjin like you have this power? Kyuubi asked. 
Well me not being a simple ninjin would help me out. Naruto said with a little smirk. Also when did they break him? Naruto asked, looking back at the boy. They broke the kid on his fifth birthday. Stupid wretched ninjins. Deep growl, QB growled out. I see, does he come in and talk to you or have you not made contact with him? Or when the seal broke did you take over his body and are just waiting for his body to be moved so you can make your escape? Naruto asked and speculated. No, I didn't take over the kid's body and yes he comes in to talk from time to time, when he does I block off the memories of what happened so he has time to relax and be happy even if just for a little while. QB told Naruto while looking a little glum. I see, are you two, two partners versus the world, or is he alone in this world? Naruto asked the QB. I would say we are more like companions, he doesn't need to worry about me taking over his body through his emotions, but we don't 100% work together all the time. Said the QB. As his companion would you like to see him freed from his prison and free from his, villages, grasp? Naruto asked the QB while putting venom in his voice when he said village and turned back to the QB. Of course I would, I hate being imprisoned, but I hate those wretched ninjins more. QB said to Naruto. Hum, that is good, would you call him in here I would like to talk to him before I help you two out. Naruto said, looking from the QB to the boy. I could drag his mind here forcefully but I don't want him to think I am an enemy, I would also like him to keep his memories for this meeting QB. Naruto finished. Are you asking that so he can give a genuine answer? The QB asked Naruto. Naruto still looking at the boy said, yes I wish to know how he feels really feels, before I set him free of his chains, oh yeah, Naruto said narrowing his eyes at the boy when talking about his feelings, then in remembrance realization as he turned to face the QB, I can also make it so he can set you free without dying, like a summons, but you will be free from the seal, I would like you two to be partners when I set you both free. Said Naruto. Really, the kid won't die if you do it, I guess I can work with the kid, we are both the only thing each other has in this world. I don't want to lose the little kid. QB said in shock at first then taking on a more sad tone. I will pull him in now, he should be here soon, QB said. Naruto didn't say anything, he just looked at the boy and waited for him to look at him so they could talk. At first, Naruto almost didn't see when the boy entered the mindscape but looking closer he could see the fingers on the boy's right hand twitch ever so slightly. Naruto passed it off to a nervous tick or past trauma. Hello there what's your name? Naruto asked the boy. The boy then looked up and said, Naruto. He then looked over to the QB and said, Katsuro, who is this? He didn't tell me his name Kit, though I did like what he had to say. Said the now named Katsuro. Like I told Katsuro my name isn't important, though I think I have a deal you would like to hear about. Naruto said to the boy. Quote dot dot dot, well take your time I have nothing else to do said the boy a little impatient. Kid you really need to work on your people skills. Katsuro said to the boy. That's not important right now, what my offer is for me to set you free of your chains and to give you enough power to destroy the village that has you imprisoned. Naruto said to the boy not to care about the disrespect. The boy was skeptical at hearing that he could never trust anyone besides Katsuro, but that was only because if he died then Katsuro died if only for a short time before he reformed. Why would you do this, what do you get from it? The boy asked. Well, I gain nothing other than the pleasure of seeing this village destroyed by you two. Naruto said motioning between the boy and the QB. So you just want to let me loose and use me as a weapon like they plan to do? The boy said to Naruto while narrowing his eyes. In a sense yes, but also no. I want you to get your revenge on this village for all your mistreatment, I hate when people are falsely imprisoned. I also despise people who betray others' trust. Naruto said, explaining to the boy. So you just want me to try and destroy the village, I think your plan and offer have one miscalculation, I can't take down a whole shinobi village by myself, I don't have any shinobi training or know any jutsu at all, I can't even fight a genin let alone Anbu and the Hokage. Said the boy. I never thought about that, how do you plan to make the kid able to fight a cage? Sure you can give him power but he needs to learn to use his newfound power. Said Katsuro to Naruto. I have that covered, I will transfer how to use his new amount of chakra, I will also give him just a few jutsu. Naruto said with two flicks of his right hand in a dismissive gesture. 
Well then let's get to it. We both have been imprisoned for a long time and I would like to feel the wind on my face again. Katsuro said. What do you mean Katsuro when we get out of here you will still stay in the remains of the seal? The boy said. I'll let him explain, here. Naruto said before doing a small noticeable wave of his right hand. When Naruto did this the ten-year-old Naruto from this world stumbled a bit before grabbing his head with his left hand and wincing in pain. You okay Kit? Katsuro asked the younger Naruto. Yeah, I'm good, just, wow, said young Naruto. You're just getting a bit of backlash from the amount of info I gave you. Naruto explained to the two. Now is the kit ready? Asked Katsuro. Yes, I will see you in the cell. Naruto said before he faded from the mindscape. Quote comma dot dot, are you going to go through with it? Kit, are you sure you don't care about anyone in the village? Katsuro asked young Naruto. Why would I care about anyone in the village who I have never even met or who is one of the people who put me in my prison? Young Naruto said. I'm just worried about you, Kit. Katsuro said. I know Katsuro. Young Naruto said. Scene change. Back in cell. Back in the cell, Naruto took his right hand off the young Naruto's head and made himself visible again, but kept himself undetectable. He would be able to talk to this world's Naruto without him just talking to the air, but the Anbu above him wouldn't know he was here. Naruto looked to the door before saying, Really, they have to come now. Before looking back to the other person in the cell with him while rolling his eyes. Don't move yet we have two Anbu bringing some food, if they throw it in your face, I'm going to kill them, if they get close to give you your food you kill them. When he said this the younger Naruto raised his head and said, Okay. I can do that. Naruto then walked up to the door before walking up the door and crouching down above the door out of sight to anyone who would walk in the door. Young Naruto put his head back down and closed his eyes and just waited for the Anbu to come to his cell. Naruto could hear soft footsteps on the stone out in the hallway before he heard the quiet click of the door lock before an Anbu stepped into the room a couple of feet before crouching down, his partner stepped in the door right behind him. The first Anbu said to the chained up 10 year old Naruto, it's lunchtime, eat up so we can get back to actual important work, with slight venom in his voice. His partner said, why not just throw the food on the floor, so he can eat the slop like a pig he is. The first Anbu said in response, he barely eats as is, I don't want to get blamed for him dying and us ending up losing our jobs. His partner said in response, I guess you're right just put his bowl of slop in front of him. The first Anbu leaned forward before putting the bowl on the floor and standing up and taking a step back. Young Naruto didn't lean down and start eating like they thought he would. Well eat up your slop like the pig you are. The Anbu closest to the door said to young Naruto. Young Naruto just looked up and opened his eyes and just stared at them with no emotion in his eyes. He then said, you or me. At this, the Anbu were a bit confused and angry that he was disrespectful to them. They then heard a deep voice say, I think a mix of both. The Anbu turned around and saw no one in the cell with them, but they saw a slight light shift above the door and looked up to see someone sticking to the wall in a crouched position. Who the hell are you? Asked the Anbu by the door. We have an intruder, said the Anbu by the chained up Naruto. The young Naruto then grabbed the chains going to his wrist and yanked them out of the wall. He then threw them forward and wrapped them around the Anbu in front of him. Young Naruto yanked the Anbu to himself before putting him in a headlock. The second Anbu turned around to see his partner in the grasp of their prisoner before he said, Hey we have an intruder. Naruto then dropped down from above the door and said, They can't hear you, I wouldn't be so foolish as to let you alert all of the others above us. The Anbu then took a defensive taijutsu stance and said, Guess I'll have to take you both out then put this demon back in his shackles. Naruto said, I'm sorry to say you will not be leaving this room alive. He then twitched his pointer finger on his left hand a little and the Anbu started to feel ill, ugh, what the hell. He said before he grabbed his chest and stomach and started screaming, ah okami. Naruto just leaned his head to the left and said, this is going to be a bit painful. The Anbu then screamed louder in pain tearing his vocal cords, his left leg then snapped upwards at the kneecap, but he did not fall over he was standing there unbalanced, his other leg then snapped upwards as well, he was now floating in the air while still having arms on his chest screaming in pain. 
The ANB used right arm snapped at his elbow and the same with his left, he was now a man with all broken limbs floating in the air. Naruto now tilted his head to the right and said, goodbye now. The Anbu now started to shrink in size while still screaming his lungs out. He now started to bleed from his eyes and ears while continuing to shrink in size before his chest started to expand and little. His chest then exploded blood into the room floating in the air, the body continued to shrink in size, its bones creating crunches and loud pops. The body of the Anbu was now just a ball of flesh and blood in the air with floating blood blobs around the room, the blood blobs now started to float to the ball of the flesh while it was still condensing. Once all the blood was together the flesh and bones were also turned to blood and paste before it floated over to Naruto and was absorbed into his body leaving no trace of the Anbu ever being there. The first Anbu who was trapped in chains watched as his partner was turned into a blood blob then absorbed into this mysterious man in the cell with the demon brat. He then said, Oh my Kami Dry Hurl what did you do to him, Dry Hurl, while almost throwing up the lunch he had before giving the demon brat his lunch. I just got rid of a minor inconvenience, as we will do to you. Naruto said before taking a step closer and crouching down to be eye level with the Anbu. Naruto then motioned for young Naruto to kill the Anbu. Young Naruto reached up with his hands and began choking the Anbu. The Anbu struggled against his binds to get free. Naruto then got an idea and took off the ANBU's mask to see his face, the Anbu had his face slowly turning blue and the life draining from his eyes. The Anbu tried to suck in air with his last bits of strength in efforts to save his life. As the ANBU's eyes rolled back in his head and he slumped over Naruto touched the Anbu and started absorbing him and then the chains the Anbu had around him, free young Naruto at the same time, feels good to get those off my wrists. Young Naruto said. Young Naruto then stood up and said, so now what, what's next? In response, Naruto said, now I teleport us to the center of the village and you do whatever you want, oh and don't forget to include Katsuro. Young Naruto said, I don't plan to leave him out of the fun. While getting a small grin on his face, Naruto reached his hand out and put it on young Naruto's shoulder and they disappeared without a trace. Scene change, the center of village. Naruto looking around saw a lot of people and families going about their day in the village square. Naruto looked at young Naruto and said, well time to let loose. Young Naruto smiled and looked around trying to find a place to start. The first thing he did was go through hand signs and blew out a giant wave of flames igniting shops around the square of flame. The instant blaze caused families and citizens to run away screaming in terror. Young Naruto then went through hand signs and a massive water dragon formed out of the water from the fountain, he then sent it at the other shops around the square that weren't already ablaze, flooding them and causing a few to collapse. Naruto then made some tri-pronged kunai out of thin air that young Naruto could use to do the horizon, I forgot to give you these. Naruto said to this world's Naruto while tossing the kunai to him. Oh yeah, I didn't even realize. Young Naruto said to the older one. It was at this time a team of shinobi arrived, judging by the vest they were wearing they were a group of chunin, they looked around trying to find the enemy shinobi who were attacking only to see two blondes, a ten-year-old boy next to an older looking man near him. They headed to them and landed on the ground near them, the leader stepped forward while looking around and said, let's get these civilians out of here we have to find the ADHCK, before he was cut off by young Naruto using one of his new kunai to slit the man's throat while he wasn't paying attention. The three other chunin got into a defensive stance and took out Kanai while the other chunin tried to stop the blood that was leaking out his now open throat. While he fell to the ground holding his throat one of the other chunin spoke up, guess these are the attackers, we need to slow them down and get him out of here. He said motioning to the chunin on the ground. Naruto then spoke up and said, this is where I leave you, don't fail, I have given you all you need. While turning around and started to walk away before he lifted his right leg like he was taking a step up a staircase then planted it on thin air, he then lifted his left leg and was now floating in the air, he then brought his left leg down and continued to walk up into the air before Chunin spoke up, hey where are you going? Get back here. Young Naruto watched as the older blonde walked high into the sky above the village to watch the carnage from a safe distance, while also having the best seat in the house, young Naruto then said, don't worry about him I'm your enemy. The chunin then looked at him, and said, you're just a kid, 
You look no older than ten what could you do? Young Naruto then said, I am also a kid who was about to have killed a chunin, while doing a quick look at the man on the floor. The chunin he had been talking to looked to the other chunin before doing a nod at each of them, they then charged him kunai drawn. The first chunin reached him and tried to slash at him with his kunai, young Naruto did a quick dodge before he pushed the back of his hand to make him almost slice at one of the other chunin's chest. The chunin on the first right took this time to throw his kanai at young Naruto's head while he was open, young Naruto grabbed a handle of the kanai in a reverse grip and used the momentum of it to do a spin and jab the kanai in the first chunin's right side. The first chunin screamed while reaching for young Naruto's wrist but failed as he quickly pulled it back before sending a kick to his back hitting him and sending him stumbling forward near the almost dead chunin. The two other chunin charged young Naruto. The one on his left reaching in his shinobi pouch on his hip and pulling out shuriken before throwing them at young Naruto, the one on his right going through hand signs before blowing out a stream of fire setting the kunai on fire. Young Naruto went through some hand signs of his own making an earth wall rise out of the ground. The chunin ran on either side of the wall to see a young Naruto looking at each of them. They jumped at their respected chunin going into a taijutsu bout with each, the young Naruto with the chunin that threw the shuriken threw a punch at the man's chest only for it to get blocked then for the chunin to throw his counter at young Naruto's face, young Naruto ducked and went for a leg sweep causing the chunin to do a little jump, young Naruto used this time to grab one of his kanai and throw it at the chunin in the air. The chunin used a kawarimi with a piece of rubble nearby to dodge the kanai, the kanai bounced of the piece of rubble, young Naruto jumped in the air and sent a kick at the deflected kanai and sent it at the chunin on the ground. The chunin tried to dodge the kanai but ended up getting a graze on his left side. The young Naruto then disappeared revealing him to be the clone, but not before seeing the chunin pull out a scroll and have a puff of smoke appear revealing a giant shuriken. The other young Naruto was in a taijutsu bout like the shadow clone was, he sent a kick at the chunin's chest only for him to block it by crossing his arms over his chest. The chunin grabbed a kanai doing a couple of quick swipes at young Naruto. Young Naruto then grabbed the man's wrist and bent his arm sending the kanai to the man's chest, the chunin was able to guide the kanai to miss his heart only for it to hit his stomach. He then jumped back to regroup with the chunins. The chunin with the large shuriken threw it at young Naruto with a shout of, I'm ending this here. As it was about to hit him young Naruto leaned back into his left and dodged the massive shuriken, the chunin was hoping for this and as young Naruto stood back up to full height he said, is that all you have to offer your like genin? Then with a pull of invisible ninja wire that was on the shuriken it changed course and headed for young Naruto's back, at first it looked like it was going to make contact but at the last second young Naruto ducked to a crouching position, he then reached up with his right hand and grabbed the center of the massive shuriken, he then spun around while grabbing the ninja wire attached to the chunin's wrist and stood while yanking at the wire causing the chunin to fly forward towards young Naruto. Young Naruto then did another spin and drove one of the sides of the shuriken into the chunin chest, he then dropped the body of the chunin on the floor. Young Naruto looked over to the other chunin and saw that behind him the other two chunin were gone which meant they went to get healed up and help would arrive soon, the last chunin was looking at young Naruto like he was familiar, but he couldn't place it. Young Naruto took one of his new kanai out and threw it right next to the chunin's head, the chunin was about to speak up with a taunt saying he missed only for young Naruto to disappear in an orange blur and appear behind the chunin in the air, grabbing his kanai in his left hand and having a rasengan in his right hand, he then slammed it down into the chunin's back, making him fall to the ground yelling in pain. Once the rasengan was expelled young Naruto took his kanai and plunged it into the back of the head of the chunin killing him. Looking around at the destroyed square young Naruto could see other shinobi arriving and staying at the edge of the square on the rooftops, Young Naruto then saw the aged Hokage arrive with an escort of Anbu behind him. Young Naruto started walking towards the Hokage. He caught the Hokage's eyes and the Hokage yelled, It's the Kyubi. He somehow escaped his prison. All the Anbu, Chunin, and Jonin got into a taijutsu stance ready to attack. They stopped when young Naruto got a little closer and spoke up saying, Hello there Hokage Tem, I see you brought some friends. One Chunin yelled out, how dare you demon, show respect to Hokage-sama. Young Naruto said, I won't respect someone who has falsely imprisoned me for something I had no control over, I will also not show any respect for someone who is as barbaric and idiotic as Hokage-ten. This seemed to make the chunin, 
and John an angrier, not only had he somehow escaped he was disrespecting the Hokage right to his face. But they were cut off from shouting for his death by him speaking up, well you have your friends, I should be kind and introduce you to my friends, he paused adding to the tense situation, he then motioned to the sky and said, my first friend is up there. As everyone looked up they saw another blonde, that looked older than the one in front of them floating above the village as if he was standing on the air itself. The Hokage looked back at the young Naruto in front of him and asked, is he the one who let you out of your cell? Young Naruto in response said, he is, he also gave me many more things, he gave me two new friends, partners and many skills it would have taken years to perfect. I do not know what you mean, but where is your second friend? Asked the aged Hokage. When the Hokage asked this, young Naruto got a small smile before he said, I'll show you, or should I say I'll bring him out. He then bit his finger and went through hand signs at a fast pace before he slammed his hand on the ground. A giant puff of smoke appeared in the square. Through the wisps of smoke, everyone could see small patches of orange, out one side of the smoke, appeared a giant orange tail. On the other side, another giant orange tail appeared. Near the top of the smoke, a small section got blown outwards, revealing a snout of an animal. There was a sudden gust of wind, blowing all the smoke away to reveal the giant orange red cubi, who in turn let out a booming roar at the Hokage and Shinobi around the area. Everyone froze, they saw the giant cubi in front of them, atop its head was the ten-year-old who they were talking to before, dressed in his rags he was given as clothes. The cubi was looking around with a massive, toothy grin on his face, the cubi then spoke in his deep, demonic sounding voice, hello there ninjins, long time no see, hey where's that fourth hokage who beat me last time, oh I remember now, he died when he sealed me ha ha ha, wonder how you're going to seal me again this time. The hokage then yelled to his shinobi, everyone don't sway, we are up against the cubi, we have beaten him once before we shall again. The shinobi all yelled in affirmation. Young Naruto atop the cubi was a bit amused, it is correct they had won once before, but the one who had beaten the cubi is gone, and the cubi now has a partner he is working with. Young Naruto then yelled out from the top of the cubi, Hey Hokage Tem I wanna show you something. The Hokage looked away from his shinobi up to the boy atop the cubi, what would that be, you demon collaborator? Young Naruto got a larger grin on his face as he pulled out one of his kunai, he then asked, does this remind one of anything, or should I say, anyone? The Hokage saw the kunai and thought it was very unique, not many nations used tri-prong kunai, but he couldn't say it reminded him of anyone, he yelled back to the boy, I can't say it does. Young Naruto was so glad that the Hokage said that, it would make the rebel all that sweeter, he then lifted his right hand and held his palm to the sky while making a small blue ball appear in it, he then yelled out, how about now, do I remind you of anyone? At this the Hokage froze in place, for a brief second he saw an image of the Yondaimi Hokage appear behind the boy with a wide grin while ruffling the boy's hair, beside him was a red-haired woman hugging the Yondaimi with a huge grin on her face and having her right hand on the boy's shoulder. The Hokage then whispered under his voice, Minato, Kashina, why did you make Naruto the holder of the Kyubi? One of the Hokage's Anbu said, did you say something Hokage-sama? The Hokage looked back and said, no, but I now know what jutsu that is and what that kunai is used for. The Anbu asked, what's the jutsu, and what is a simple kunai used for? The Hokage said, one of the most deadliest combinations of jutsu there has ever been made, the combination the Yandaimi himself used and what earned him the name of the yellow flash of the leaf the Rasengan, and the Horishin. This left the Anbu speechless until one spoke up asking the question they all wanted to know, how did the demon brat learn the Yondaimi's techniques? The Hokage said in response, I do not know, but when we defeat him I will ask him. The Anbu then looked back to the giant behemoth in front of them that was the Kyubi, they knew this was going to be one of the hardest fights they have ever had in their career. Young Naruto was getting a bit impatient and so was the Kyubi, they wanted to get along with destroying the village already, the Kyubi then growled out, are you ninjin done already, I wish to get this along. One brave or stupid chunin whichever way you look at it yelled out, shut up demon we will defeat Ak. But he was cut off by having a kanai appear lodged in his throat. 
Everyone followed the path of the Kanai to see young Naruto with his hand outstretched and looking in the direction of the Chunin. The Kyubi was the first to speak, ha 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 you stupid ninjins. This caused everyone to get angrier at the Kyubi and younger Naruto, the Hokage yelled at everyone to charge, and they did, the Kyubi drew back his right hand and swiped at a huge amount of shinobi, causing a lot of casualties. The shinobi started to launch every type of jutsu they knew, some shinobi were launching fire jutsu, some water jutsu, others were launching earth jutsu, and a few shinobi were using wind and lightning jutsu, but none of it was effective against the mighty Kyubi. The Kyubi did another swipe causing mass casualties and many to be injured. Young Naruto started throwing kunai around the area and teleporting behind shinobi and stabbing them in the back of the head then teleporting away with a new kunai in hand to stab the next shinobi. Young Naruto was now atop the Kyubi watching as the shinobi were getting smashed and stomped to death by the Kyubi. The Hokage was watching as his shinobi were getting massacred. The Hokage then saw young Naruto make a Rasengan in his hand before four white blades like things formed on the edges, the Hokage said, how did he complete it not even Minato could complete it. Young Naruto then threw it at the Hokage, the Anbu went through quick hand signs and made earth walls rise out of the ground, the wind release, Rasenshuriken shredded through the earth walls but gave enough time for the aged Hokage to jump away. The few Anbu that weren't able to jump away were caught in the Rasenshuriken when it rapidly expanded. Young Naruto threw his Horishin Kanai near the Hokage and Anbu to start with his most powerful enemy to make taking out the rest of the village all that much easier. The Anbu that weren't caught in the Rasenshuriken charged him. The first Anbu reached him and launched a punch at his chest. Young Naruto blocked the punch and kicked him away before turning around with a kunai to block the kunai and shuriken that were thrown at him. As young Naruto was getting overcrowded by Anbu, he saw the Hokage jump away near the shinobi that were engaged with the Kyubi. Young Naruto kept throwing that Anbu away from him, but he was eventually overrun and received a strong punch to the face, before he hit the ground he disappeared in an orange blur. The Anbu looked around trying to find him before one of them spotted him atop the Kyubi's head. You okay Kit? Asked the Kyubi of the young Naruto. Yeah I'm good, just not used to getting hit ha ha ha. Young Naruto replied to his partner. Ha ha ha, guess you're right Kit. The Kyubi said back. Young Naruto stood up from his crouching position and saw the Hokage going through a long chain of hand signs, the shinobi around him got into a defensive position around him. Naruto was in the air watching the massacre of shinobi before he saw the Hokage jump away for the younger Naruto. He saw him start to go through a long chain of hand signs and immediately knew what the jutsu was, it was the sealing jutsu, Reaper Death Seal. Naruto knew the basics of how the jutsu worked, someone would summon the shinigami, and it would do what the summoner requested before the shinigami would claim their soul. Naruto was preparing to step in and stop shinigami from messing with his fun. The Hokage then called out hit jutsu, sealing jutsu, Reaper Death Seal. A rift opened up behind the aged Hokage and out came a tall, transparent figure with light purple skin dressed in a large white kimono, in the figure's mouth was a tonto, on the figure's left hand was red prayer beads wrapped up the figure's wrist. Naruto saw this figure and knew this wasn't Shinigami, the figure didn't have the same feel as the Shinigami he had met. As the Hokage was about to tell the Shinigami what his request was, Naruto made the figure appear before him in the air. Down below the Hokage was looking around in shock trying to find what happened to the Shinigami. The Shinigami looked around and saw he was suddenly in the air above, his summoner, who are you? Asked Naruto of the Shinigami. The Shinigami said, I am the Shinigami, what do you need mortal, I was already summoned and I must do his request first. Naruto said, you are no Shinigami, I have met Shinigami. Shinigami said back, foolish mortal I would know if I had met you before. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the figure before saying, you never answered my question who, are, you, Shinigami, now mad that a mortal was during him said, I normally don't kill foolish ninjins for no reason, but I think I can make an exception. He then started to reach for Naruto's chest in a motion to attempt to grab his soul. Naruto knew what this false Shinigami was trying to do, he quickly grabbed his wrist stopping him in his tracks, he then asked, how can you grab me, no one can grab me in this form. Naruto said, ah ah ah, no one can grab you except a person, 
who is more powerful than you, and or in a position of a higher power. Shinigami, said in anger, no one is more powerful than me other than Yami-sama and Kami-sama. Naruto gave a little chuckle before he said, ah but who is more powerful than Kami? Who does she answer to? Shinigami, then said, she answers to no one, she has the highest position possible on the council of the gods. Naruto was now getting a little annoyed, with an eye roll he asked, who or what has the potential to have Kami answer to them and bow at their feet? Shinigami, narrowed his eyes before saying, that would be, the one, who sits away from most talks and debates of the gods. Naruto had a growing grin on his face before he said, ah yes that is what I was meant to do, meant to listen and keep the kitties in order, sounded boring so I left. Shinigami, listened to Naruto say this then gave a little scoff then said, as if someone like you could in that position of power. Naruto was starting to not like this false Shinigami, he narrowed his eyes and growled out, I may not like my position and my supposed duty but I will enforce my will if I have to, do I make myself clear? Shinigami, realized if what he said was true he would be in for an earful, if not from Kami then certainly from the real Shinigami, he thought about it and realized he can't just take this stranger's word for it, so he asked, if what you say is true then can you give me some sort of proof? Naruto thought about what he could use as a form of proof, he then got a fun and cheeky idea, he said to, Shinigami, okay, sure I can give proof. He then reached forward and touched the top of, Shinigami, s, head, he showed him the first five or so minutes of his first interaction with Kami, Yami, and Shinigami, he also showed the interaction from their point of view. When, Shinigami, got the sudden influx of memories he winced a little before saying, I deeply apologize, Naruto-sama, I didn't know, with a small bow of his head. Naruto got a small grin again before he said, that is alright if you ever see me again just don't mess with my fun, okay? Shinigami, said, hi, Naruto-sama, is that all I can do for you? Naruto gave a little thought into the question before he said, actually you can leave this world and carry on with your duty, oh and don't tell Shinichan I'm here, okay? Shinigami, gave another quick nod and said, of course Naruto-sama. Shinigami, then left via a portal leaving Naruto to continue to watch the village being destroyed. Looking down he saw this world's Naruto teleporting around using the Horishin, he was making quick work of the Chunin, and Jonin, he even had some Anbu kills. The QB was massacring the Shinobi just like his partner, the Shinobi's attacks seemed to not affect the QB. The Hokage was still looking around trying to find the Shinigami, who he thought he would use to seal the QB again then give him his soul. Naruto was watching the aged Hokage and his Anbu look around trying to find the Shinigami, and gave a little chuckle at the fact he had taken away the Hokage's last resort. Naruto then decided to mess with the Hokage, he quickly teleported in front of the Anbu and the Hokage. Down with the Hokage he had ordered his Anbu to keep up their guards and look around for the Shinigami. Then suddenly the blonde that was in the sky appeared before them seemingly with no defenses raised or weapons on his person. The Hokage then said, you. Naruto gave another chuckle before saying, yes, me, while flailing his arms in a way like he was frightened Toby behavior lol. The Hokage, mad at being mocked by this stranger, yelled, Anbu this is the one who let the QB free. At this, all the Anbu looked at Naruto and seemed to get even more into battle mode. Naruto decided to not fight as he was in no mode right now, so instead, he made all the Anbu unable to move along with the Hokage when Naruto started walking over to the Anbu and Hokage, they found themselves unable to move. As Naruto kept walking towards them the Anbu and Hokage struggled to get free from their invisible bindings. Naruto was now in front of the Hokage who was still struggling and thrashing around in an attempt to get free, Naruto then said, hello there, enjoying seeing your village destroyed. The Hokage said through gritted teeth, when we get free we will defeat you and Naruto, then we will reseal the QB and pass on our will of fire to the next generation of excellent shinobi of Konoha. Naruto again started to chuckle before he started to stifle his laughs before breaking out laughing in the Hokage's face, ha 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 ha, oh I'm sorry but, no, you won't be doing any of that. Naruto then motioned to the Anbu and allowed the Hokage to look over his shoulder at them. 
When he looked over his shoulder he saw his Anbu still struggling before a resoundingly loud crack and a mix of pops echoed around the area and every single Anbu stopped moving. Naruto then let their bodies go and they fell limply to the ground with a thud. The Hokage not seeing this stranger perform any hand signs or call out a jutsu to kill over twenty or so Anbu, was now scared of what else he could do. The Hokage asked, WH what D did you do T to them? Naruto returned his question with a light chuckle, he then said, Oh, you know, just snapped all their necks at once. The Hokage started sweating when he said this but he steeled his nerves before asking, Why are you doing this, Konoha is a village of peace, we have done nothing wrong. When the Hokage said this Naruto stopped his little chuckles he was doing now and again, then with no emotion he asked the Hokage, would every resident of Konoha believe and agree with that statement? The Hokage blurted out in his rage, yes. Naruto then asked again, really every resident? When he asked this the Hokage froze, Naruto then motioned over to where the younger Naruto and Kyuubi were fighting the shinobi, he then looked back at the Hokage and said, I think you may have forgotten a resident, but he is one of if not the most important person in this village. The Hokage was now looking down at the ground knowing everything he said was true, the village he claimed to be the most peaceful, had cast aside a child right at birth and abandoned him to the wolves. What Naruto said next shook the aged Hokage to the bone, don't worry here as in Serutobi I will correct your sins. The Hokage started to feel his bones creaking under his skin like they were being twisted and stretched, he then let out a scream of pain as he felt his left arm snap and crack into small pieces of bone, it now was more like a blob of muscle with shards of bone in it instead of bones with muscles on top. The Hokage let out another scream when he felt his right arm shatter as his left arm had. When the Hokage's legs shattered he fell to the floor squirming around in pain, Naruto then reached down and grabbed the Hokage by his neck and brought him eye level with himself. Naruto stared the Hokage in the eyes while he was squirming in pain and said, well I think that's a start. He then started walking over to the younger Naruto. When he reached the younger Naruto he saw him stab a kunai through one of the last shinobi's head, once he pulled his kunai free he turned around and saw the older Naruto with the aged Hokage in his grasp by his neck. All the shinobi that were heavily injured but not yet dead watched as the taller blonde tossed the Hokage on the ground who once again screamed in pain as his broken limbs flopped around. Young Naruto then asked, what are you going to do to him? Naruto said back, not what I'm going to do, what are you going to do? Young Naruto looked from the Hokage to the taller blonde and asked, what do you wish me to do? Naruto then said, well I recommend taking a kunai and dragging it right along here, he said running his pointer finger left to right on the Hokage's neck, it will commemorate your victory over this village, you will also be able to get some closure. Young Naruto thought about it, it would be a slow and painful death so he was good there, it would destroy the morale of the few shinobi that were still alive, and like the taller blonde said he could commemorate his victory over Konoha, and as a plus, he could get closure. Young Naruto lifted his hand that had the still bloody kunai and brought it near the Hokage's neck, the taller blonde grabbed the hair on the Hokage's head and tilted it back so his neck was more exposed, younger Naruto brought the kunai so it was now touching the Hokage's neck. The Hokage looked young Naruto in the eyes and tried to speak but all that came out was some soft grunts of pain. Young Naruto slowly dragged the kunai along the Hokage's neck, looking him in the eyes, as he started to gurgle on his blood Naruto let go of his hair letting him fall to the ground while trying to move his shattered arms to stop his throat from bleeding. Naruto looked from the Hokage's dying form to the younger Naruto and said, well congratulations you just killed the shinobi no Kami, god of shinobi, and almost completely wiped out Kanahagakur no Sato. Young Naruto looked up at him and said, if it weren't for you I would still be stuck in that cell, with my only companion being Katsuro. Naruto said back, I guess that is true, but you did most of the work yourself, I just watched from the sky and took care of a little interference. Naruto then looked around and saw all the bodies of the shinobi scattered around, I saw the destroyed buildings of shops and homes, looking to his left he saw the Kyuubi stomping a couple more homes and shinobi before walking over to the two Narutos and laying down with his head in his paws with his tail swishing behind him causing a breeze in the area. Kyuubi then spoke up saying, Kid it seems that was the last of them. Young Naruto then looked around and said, It would seem so, he finished saying that by looking over to the taller blonde and asked, What will you do now? 
Naruto said to the Cubian young Naruto, Well this is where I leave you two to your own devices, you can go and do whatever I don't care, go and destroy the other villages or even meet the other Jinchuriki, heck free the other Biju. Naruto then made a portal appear next to him before he started to walk through it, but before he walked through he turned his head to look at the younger Naruto then said, Happy birthday, I hope you like the birthday gift I gave you. Young Naruto was shocked, he hadn't looked at any newspaper or calendar so he had no idea it was his birthday, he then said, thank you, I love it, it's the best gift I have ever gotten. QB Sweat dropped at this and said, Kit, this is the only gift you have ever gotten. Young Naruto turned to his right and said, I know you furball, I want him to know I like his gift. QB rolled his eyes and said, fine, my bad. Naruto coughed into his hand to get their attention, when they were looking at him he said, I'm glad you like your gift, I'm sorry but this is where I leave you, goodbye. He then turned back to his portal and walked through it leaving young Naruto and Kyubi to themselves. Kyubi then looked down at his Naruto and said, Happy birthday Kit. Young Naruto turned to Kyubi and said, Thank you Katsuro, want to finish off the civilians now. Kyubi cracked a wide grin and said, I would love to. He then started to stand up to his full height after Naruto jumped on his head, they then headed off to a part of the village that was still standing. Scene change. Council of the Gods. The gods were currently in a heavy debate or more accurately, Zeus was yelling like usual. Their topic of argument, Naruto, they were arguing over what their course of action should be, whether they would, hunt, him down or let him be. Zeus was in the middle of yelling out his opinion which wa. Of course we should go after him, he can't just run away and be on his own like that. Zeus finished yelling out. Zeus' brothers were once again by his side listening to his screaming, his brother Hades was leaning far back in his chair looking as if he hadn't slept for millennia. Poseidon was also sitting back in his chair, but unlike his brother, he was sitting straight up and was actually paying attention to his surroundings. Anubis was the closest to the three brothers but he was one of the gods paying the least attention to what they had to say or more specifically, what Zeus had to say. Ra was following Anubis led and wasn't paying Zeus any mind. Shinigami was the closest to Zeus of her and her sisters and she wished for once she had talked Yami into switching seats with her. Kami was trying her best to keep a neutral stand in the discussion but she was getting so close to standing up and just saying, fuck it, and kicking everyone out. Yami was one of the furthest gods away from Zeus as she was seated almost on the arch of the table, for once she was glad she had this seat. Next to Yami was a woman with long, flowing, and curly white hair with black ends, she also had creamy white skin with a beauty mark under her right eye. She had beautiful blue eyes. She was dressed in a black kaminio with red trimmings, ending above her ankles. This was the goddess Amaterasu, she didn't normally attend meetings, and for once she wished she had skipped out, but Kami had asked everyone to come. Next to Amaterasu was another woman, she had long, smooth black hair tied in a ponytail going to her mid-back, with some hair covering her right eye. She had black eyes with seemingly no pupil. She was dressed in a black kaminio with dark purple trimming, it also had little white dots making it look like the night sky. In her left hand, she had a staff leaning against the desk topped with a crescent moon. This was the goddess Sukuyomi, like her sister Amaterasu, she didn't normally attend meetings as she was always busy. Sometimes she would also skip meetings and now she remembered why. Next to Tsukuyomi was a man a little taller than her, he had black hair with some white hair mixed in going down to his shoulders. He was dressed in a white kaminio with a bit of red on the front and on his hips. On his left hip, he had a sheathed katana. This was the god Suzano, like his sisters, Suzano was always busy and or skipped a meeting to avoid Zeus, he was quite annoyed that he had to hear Zeus yelling. Next to Suzano was a woman with smooth black hair going down to her mid-back, with beautiful, light blue eyes. She was dressed in a white kaminio with little red linings on the hips and wrists. This is the goddess she didn't have many godly duties, but she would prefer to do them for the next century than hear this buffoon yelling. Next to her was a man with messy black hair going down to his shoulders, he had dark brown eyes that made it hard to see the pupil. He was dressed in dark brown, black kaminio going down to his waist, on his lower half he was wearing bunched up white harem pants, that were tied up at his midcalf. 
Leaning against the desk in front of him he had a naganata with a bit of red rope around the base where the blade meets wood. This was the god Azanagi, just like the man across from him at the other side of the you desk, he could care less about what was being said, though he did try and pay attention to everything Kami was saying in response to Zeus. This was the scene inside of the council room of the gods, their topic of debate, discussion, was indeed Naruto and their takes were of course different, Zeus wanted to hunt Naruto down and maybe capture and or kill him. Kami was speaking for herself and her sisters when she told everyone that they should leave Naruto to do his own thing. Amaterasu and her sister Sukuyomi along with their brother Suzano just wanted to meet Naruto, they had yet to do so and would prefer to meet him before making a decision on their course of action. Izanami and her ex-husband Izanagi could care less about what Zeus wanted to do, they had been around long enough to know everything always worked out in the end. Of course, if you try to interfere things could always go worse than what you thought was going to happen, that's why they took a more hands-off approach to everything. Zeus of course was trying to get everyone on his side against Naruto so he would have a chance at claiming the head seat at the Council of the Gods. He was also concerned about their other, little, problem. I am sure Naruto-sama is doing just fine on his own, there is no possible threat to him on any world he may visit. Kami said to the still-seething Zeus. I do not care if he is in any danger, I am saying he still has his duties he must perform. Zeus yelled out. Kami then narrowed her eyes at Zeus and was about to speak before she was interrupted by Anubis, you should watch your tongue Zeus, you never know whose ears your words may reach. It was at this time that a portal silently opened up above Naruto's chair, he then quietly came out of the portal and floated down into his seat. No one seemed to have noticed him pop out of nowhere and he was glad he still wanted to hear what everyone was talking about. As Naruto was readjusting himself in his chair into a more relaxed pose Kami spoke up, yes I agree with Anubis, I will not stand for any blatant disrespect of Naruto-sama, no matter who is the one who says the disrespectful remark. Naruto hearing this let a small smile come onto his face, he then started looking around the table first looking over to Anubis and Ra. He saw Anubis' ears twitching on his head along with his nose twitching every now and then. Anubis then with his eyes only looked over at Naruto and widened his eyes a bit in surprise. Naruto not wanting to get found out so soon put a finger up to his lips in a shush. Ing motion, Anubis gave a small, unnoticeable nod to Naruto. Ra was looking at Anubis and followed his gaze to Naruto, he too gave a small, unnoticeable nod to Naruto, in recognition of his request. Naruto then looked over to the other side of the room and saw the other side of the you desk actually had gods sitting in the seats, he gave them a quick once over before looking back to the goddess next to Yami. He then noticed she was looking at him with only her eyes, he then saw that small smile graced her lips before she gave him a little wink and went back to looking over at Zeus. Zeus was in the middle of a bit more shouting before Naruto got bored and coughed into his hand getting the attention of the other gods in the room. As everyone turned to Naruto he looked around and made sure he had all their attention before he said, well hello everyone, how did you do without me, miss me? Kami was the first to speak up saying, I'm sure everyone is glad you're back, Naruto-sama. Zeus then spoke up, not everyone. Naruto put a mock hurt expression on and said with fake hurt, ah don't be so mean Zeus, I just heard you yelling about how you wanted to be back, no need to be all bashful now. This angered Zeus even more, if that was somehow possible, he yelled out, listen here you little piece of she, before he was cut off by Kami yelling out, Zeus you will hold your tongue or I will cut it out of your mouth. Zeus then said to everyone, well now is our chance to get rid of this punk. Naruto looked over everyone that was in the room before looking over to Zeus and giving a little chuckle, oh Zeus you would need a lot more help to take me out. Zeus then stared at Naruto trying to intimidate him before he said, you're just some brat who got lucky and ascended to godhood, I bet you're not even that powerful. Naruto said back, and you got lucky too, your mother hid you from your hungry father if I remember correctly. You will not speak of my mother. Zeus yelled out. Naruto then mocked Zeus by saying, ooh, think I found a sore spot, Zeus is a mama's boy, well I guess you would be with a father who eats his children. Zeus then made a move to stand up while saying, I said to not talk abo, before he lost his voice, just lost it, he was still in the middle of his yelling but no sound was coming out. 
Zeus brothers looked at him concerned as they had never heard silence with Zeus around. Everyone on the right side of the table from where Naruto was let out a soft sigh of relief. Yami then said to Naruto, Naruto-sama you're a lifesaver, I think my ears would have started to bleed if he kept on yelling like that. While she looked over her shoulder and around her seat to look at Naruto. Azanagi then let out a chuckle of his own before saying, Yes, I feel we all would have derived into screaming at each other with no clue what any of us were saying like a troop of screaming baboons. Kami then groaned and said, I would hate for us all to turn into Zeus. At this remark Zeus had realized what happened and had stopped his muted screaming. Naruto then looked over at Zeus before he mastinoed over to him. Zeus then tasted out if he could talk by saying, Ah. Oh. He then looked back over to Naruto before yelling out again, I'm going to kill you. Naruto just rolled his eyes at the way Zeus was acting, he then said, Zeus, you may think you are an all-powerful being, but you have to accept that there is someone more powerful than you. Zeus wasn't having any of it so he yelled out, Yay yeah, right, like some brat who hasn't even been a god for a full year yet can beat me in a full-on battle to the death. Naruto then dropped his smug look, making his face an emotionless mask. Naruto then said to Zeus, If you wish to fight me Zeus I will not stop you, you are welcome to try. Zeus was now internally jumping for joy at the prospect of beating Naruto in front of some of the other gods, he would get to show them that he deserved the head seat, that he deserved to be the one with that much power and authority over the other gods. Zeus then said with confidence oozing out, I accept your challenge, when I beat a weak brat like you I will claim that seat which is rightfully mine, I then think I will strip you of your godhood, you don't deserve to have the power you do. He then started to stand up by putting his hands on the table and leaning forward while standing up, but before he could fully stand up he was flung into his chair knocking it down before he flew into the wall that was behind him. He was currently held against the wall by what felt like an immeasurable force, his feet off the ground unable to move, pinned to the wall like his arms next to his head. As Zeus looked over at Naruto he could see the same emotionless mask on his face. As he tried to pry his arms free in hopes of getting a grip onto something to move his body Zeus said, what the hell did you do you stupid piece of, before he was cut off by the invisible force increasing causing the wall to form spider web like cracks around Zeus body. Zeus was then pushed into the wall a bit more, causing more cracks to form, while also putting immense strain on Zeus body, he could feel his body barely holding up, his bones barely staying intact, barely holding the rest of his body parts in place. Zeus now had his eyes closed and his teeth gritted, he was letting out grunts every so often from the pain of feeling his body being crushed. Zeus then opened his eyes enough to see Naruto standing in front of him with his same emotionless mask, Naruto then said to Zeus, you know Zeus I have put up with you for a long time, I let you open your mouth to speak and all that comes out is complaint, nagging, and insults towards me. I know you don't like me, you don't even know me, but let me tell you something about me. I will not stand for the blatant disrespect from you, am I clear? Zeus grunted in response before he gathered enough strength to open his lips just enough to spit at Naruto, the spit never reached Naruto as it froze mid-air about a foot in front of his face. The glob of spit was in the air floating and changing shape like it had not gravity applied to it. The spit that changed directions landing on Zeus' face. He let out a grunt of disgust before once again opening his eyes to look at Naruto which he had closed to avoid getting his own spit in his eyes. As Naruto was looking at Zeus like he was nothing more than an ant under a microscope, Zeus was getting an uneasy feeling in his stomach. The kind you get right before something bad happens, the tight sinking feeling in Zeus' lower abdomen was all he could think about, and the blank stare he was getting from Naruto. Naruto then spoke up saying, right when I was talking about your disrespectful attitude you try to spit in my face, I guess I need to show you and the others an example of why to not piss me off, cause Zeus you just pissed me off. Zeus then felt the force that was keeping him pinned to the wall increase, he felt his bones crack under the pressure, he felt his lungs let out all of the air in themselves, he felt the wall he was pinned to about to give way but it was just barely holding. Zeus was now letting out more and more grunts of pain as the pressure kept increasing more and more. He and everyone else in the room then heard a snap before Zeus let out a scream of pain, using what little air he had, everyone then heard 205 more snaps and cracks fill their ears. When every bone in Zeus' body was broken he fell to the floor in a heap and with a grunt. Naruto then turned around and looked at Zeus' brothers and told them, 
Pick up your sad excuse of a brother and take him to your homeworld, you three are dismissed. Hades then looked over to Poseidon who gave a small nod before he started to stand, as Poseidon and Hades grabbed Zeus standing him up on his disfigured legs they heard Naruto say, before you leave I hope you have got my message that I will not stand for any disrespect, from any of you, no go. As he finished saying that a portal opened up behind them and they stepped through leaving behind the council of the gods. Naruto then turned around and walked back to his seat before he slumped back in his seat letting out a sigh, that on the surface seemed to be from exhaustion. Looking around Naruto could see all the faces of everyone in the room looking at him, not with disgust or fear, but just looking to see what he would do or say next, they knew Zeus wouldn't die from his injuries and even if he did they all wouldn't miss him. Yami then spoke up and said, Wow Naruto-sama I didn't know you knew how to torture someone so well, you inflicted pain on Zeus while also inflicting fear into his heart. Naruto gave a light chuckle before saying, Why thank you Yami, I do hope he and you all have learned a little something today. Kami spoke up and said, I think we all have Naruto-sama. Naruto gave her a little nod acknowledging he heard her before he said, Well with that out of the way, what was the other little issue? Well, while you were away Naruto-sama an ex-god escaped his eternal prison, bringing along some of his underlings, we suspect he is headed to one of our worlds to collect the biju till he is powerful enough to challenge us. Shinigami said in her ever emotionless voice. Kami spoke up next, his name is Danuja, he was once one of the more powerful of us gods, that was before he got greedy and tried to take up the very seat you sit in now Naruto-sama. Naruto then said, I assume you all took care of him and then imprisoned him and his lackeys. That is correct Naruto-sama, said Kami in return, we stripped much of his power away, but he is still very powerful, we ask you Naruto-sama to please hunt him down, and if you wish to serve as judge, jury, and executioner when you come across him. Naruto then looked up at the fully marble ceiling, he closed his eyes taking on a thinking pose, I don't see anything wrong with that, do you know which of the many worlds he went to? Naruto said, looking back to Kami. Kami then said in response, we aren't entirely sure Naruto-sama, but we are sure you will be able to find him and stop his plan. Naruto then stared at Kami for a few seconds before saying, all right I found him, wasn't that hard to find. Kami seemed a little surprised at this before she regained her composer before saying, when will you leave Naruto-sama? Naruto quickly responded by saying, why wait, I think I'll leave now. Yami then said in a weaning tone, but you just got here Naruto-sama. Kami then said to her sister, Yami, if Naruto-sama wants to leave right now he has every right to. Yami said back, I know but I just don't want him to. Kami gave a small laugh before saying, I know Yami. Naruto-sama before you go, what did you do while you were away? Naruto then looked over the three sisters and then also looked to his right to see they too wanted to know. Well of course I went hopping from world to world. If the world was inherently evil or if they were mean or harmful to that world's version of me whether male or female, I would give that version of me the power to destroy all they hated in the world and once they were done I would consume the whole universe before making a new one in its place, or if that world's version of me had died due to the village's mistreatment of them I would just consume the world outright, making a new one in its place. To say the other gods were shocked would be an understatement. They couldn't believe he did that to whole universes, they just had one question which Kami asked, how many universes did you visit? Naruto gave them all a once over before saying, I had visited 153 total universes, 23 of which that version of me had died, 67 of the world a version of me was neglected or disowned from the village, 34 versions of me turned down my offers to get back at the village, 29 of them are still going around destroying their world. Some of the worlds are still reforming, some have just spawned human life, and others are in the time of the Sage of Six Paths. Yami was the first to get out of her shock saying, wow Naruto-sama, just, wow. Shinigami was next to speak, you certainly have been busy during the year you have been gone. Naruto then stood up while saying, yes I have, I have learned many things while I was gone, I have thought up many cool tricks I can do with my powers. Sorry to cut the reunion short but I must be going now. Amaterasu spoke up saying, haven't even met and you are already leaving. Naruto then looked over to the other side of the table and said to them, we can have a proper greeting when I get back, I don't think this will take too long. 
Naruto then opened up a portal to his left before looking over everyone and saying, I best be going now. Yami said, Be safe Naruto-sama. Kami also said, Yes, please be safe Naruto-sama. Shinigami also said to Naruto, I am sure you will return uninjured, but be safe Naruto-sama. Naruto once again gave everyone a once-over, he got a small nod from Anubis and Ra, he looked to his right to see Amaterasu with the same small smile she had before, everyone else gave him a nod, confirming that they heard he is leaving. He then turned to the portal and stepped through while saying, here I come Danuja, you better be ready. He then disappeared to an unknown world. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.